everybody! Welcome back to Twofold Tuesday! Another late evening one this week. I didn't actually intend to have two late Twofold Tuesdays in a row, but I forgot I had a hair appointment today. <laughs> Until I was making my schedule yesterday, and then I was like, oh, hold on. I can't do a daytime stream today. I'm going to be getting my hair done. <laughs> So it's an evening one again, which actually works out better time zone wise for a few people, I think. But hello, how is everyone doing? Happy Tuesday. Welcome on in. I am so ready for some more twofold times. I love this game so much. This is the start of the week where I said that I would take a break and I'm proceeding to not really take a break. <laughs> My idea of taking a break turns out to be, well, I like playing these games. So that's a break, right? I'm having a break from the stresses of life to play Twofold and Divinity and the Talos Principle 2. <laughs> That's how it works, right? I, I don't have to actually stop or anything. Just, there's definitely a break, I'm sure. <laughs> thank you, thank you for the head bath. But welcome everybody. Let me let me go down and say hi to everyone properly. Hello, Suzume and Barb lurking before the stream started. I see you there. Thank you for the lurks. And Brushy, hello! Lovely to see you! It has been a while, it feels like it has been a while, but honestly you don't ever have to apologize for not being around for a while with me, because I don't recognize the passage of time anyway, so... <laughs> it's fine, just just roll up after like half a year and be like, oh hi again, it seems like yesterday, it's fine. <laughs> but welcome in, welcome Nicoleo, thank you for the head pad! Now you get to hear my voice again. Hi. <laughs> Hopefully it is just as well as you remember it. Just as nice as you remember it. And hello, Caps. Lovely to see you as always. I'm glad you didn't have to wake up at 5 a.m. today. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Welcome, Shy Fi. Lovely to see you. Welcome, Karazu. It, it is indeed twofold time. Twofold Tuesday. I'm so excited. Lovely to see you. And Zariad, hello. It is you, not Cat, Zariad. Well, have, have you considered becoming Cat? It's pretty good. I can, I can vouch for it. Cat is quite good. <laughs> but yes, thank you for the head fat. And also, Suzume, hi. Can't believe you're being called out for having stream open hours before. Look, I didn't mention the hours before. I just said just before stream. <laughs> you just outed yourself with that one. Time is a social construct, yes, and I, I, I choose to not acknowledge it. I, time is fake. Ah. <laughs> uh, I actually ended up waking up at five this morning anyway. Oh. <laughs> okay, but it gave you, yeah, it gave you time to actually, like, wake up, be awake, maybe get some lunch. It's around lunchtime, I think. <laughs> But I'm glad you can make it. I'm I'm really excited to play more of this because last stream, uh, it ended up being a slightly shorter stream because I was really, really tired. I was extremely tired and it was very warm. So we finished act one of Caprice's route and then I've left it right at the start of the next scene after the achievement popped. So we're going to be starting with uh, Caprice act two and I'm terrified. I'm very terrified because I know what happens in Act 2. I know what happened in Millie's Act 2. And I am terrified to see the other side of that. I'm, I'm, I don't even know what's, what's going to happen. It feels so different because like all of, all of Millie's route, like we, we don't see much of Caprice at all. I had no idea what she's doing. So being able to see it from Caprice's side is really interesting because in this one too, we have no idea what Millie's doing. Is she okay? Is she actually holding up okay without an emotional support, Olive? I don't know if she would be. <laughs> Genuinely, like, really, really worried about her. Because a lot of, like, how she dealt with, um, quote-unquote, Christmas. <laughs> I feel like a lot of that, like, she only dealt with it as well as she did because Olive was there. I feel like Olive played a huge part in that, and if they hadn't been there... I don't know how Millie would have coped, so I don't know how Millie's gonna be coping in this one. I'm really scared. I'm really scared. I'm so worried for her, but she's 
feel like Millie is being way more antagonistic without without an olive to to calm her down. I think she's fully just being like, well, I'm the bad guy, so I'm going to act like the bad guy. I'm going to do worse things. And that's not healthy. It's really not healthy. <laughs> I'm worried for her. It's okay. It's okay. We can figure this out. But we don't even have to worry about that right now. We are focusing on passing exams, passing the year, being part of the art club still, and Caprice. When will they kiss? That is all I need to know now. But here we go. <laughs> Look, it's called shared feelings. It's called shared feelings. Suzume, stop it. Bop. Bop you on the head. Bop. <laughs> right, I like that this is called shared feelings, though. I'm... Oh, do I... What do I make this page called? What do I call this page? Dang, yeah, I caught you, sorry. <laughs> it's so funny because a lot of the times that you've done, like, song lyric quotes as comments, I've, I've kind of, like, glossed over it a little bit. I've been like, I'm not sure what this comment fully means <laughs> in the context of the current conversation. So my mind kind of glosses over it. <laughs> but now that, like, you've mentioned it, I'm becoming way more aware. I'm, I'm becoming more more alert to your shenanigans. I'm gonna catch them. I'm, I'm probably going to miss something and you're gonna be like, ha, you said you could catch me and you can't, but... Uh... <laughs> Curse is spoiled again! You would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for that meddling pink-haired cat girl from the UK. <laughs> anyway, this one I literally just called Caprice with lots of exclamation points. I think this one can be... A little more subdued. This could be like Caprice. Smiley face. Yeah, there we go. That's that's the name of this page. It's the name of this page. Is is like Caprice? Mayhap, mayhap Caprice times. <laughs> Get me a good Sunday stuff. <laughs> you. Caprice foreboding. Oh, I, I could do that. Caprice and everything is fine. There we go. That's the name of this page now. It is uh, Caprice and everything is fine. <laughs> because it's going to be. I'm sure. Oh, I love my accent. I'm glad you do. I'm glad you do for it is mine. And I don't have another one. <laughs> I mean, I say that. I can do some accents. I can do like varying flavors of British quite well. But if I try and do like other kinds of accents, it's it's not great. <laughs> I'm not great at it. Also, Space Dinosaurus, hello, welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well too. I'm doing well. I've, I've had a nice start to the week, I think. It's, um, I've been going through a lot of tough times recently, so I've, I've had a nice week start, which I'm hoping will continue. Oh, I'm chibi. Okay, chibi time. Chibi time. Why am I... There. There. There, let's do that. Chibi time. <laughs> Thank you for the chibi redeem. Look how small I am now. Look how, look how tiny I am. Like, I'm, I'm just really, really small. Look at that. I can't believe how tiny I am. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the chibi redeem. Welcome. And Rosalie Neko as well. Thank you for the luck. Thank you for stopping in. I hope you're also doing well. I, I can't deal with this. I'm distracting myself. I'm distracting myself with that. I can't do it. <laughs> I've got a big personality and a head full of explosives. <laughs> also, Maya, hello. Oh, gonna have to miss a bit of this thanks to a therapy appointment happening soon, but should be back afterward. Oh, I hope the therapy goes well. I hope you have a good session. But thank you for stopping in either way. Thank you for the luck. It is very appreciated. And it's all good because I'm going slowly either way. It's slow paced gaming times. But thank you, thank you. And thank you for Chibi. And Mogo, thank you for the head pat too. Welcome, welcome. I used your art on my schedule again this week. I was trying to figure out what art to put on, and I was like, you know what? It's 
all Oliri time. All Oliri? What what am I doing? What? Liriv? I can't just say Ollie. <laughs> I can't say Ollie because that's just Ol Ol Olri. 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 What am I on about? Anyway, me wearing Olive's clothes. I just stole their clothes. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Thank you for that art. I love it so much. It's it's so perfect. But yes, I'm very excited to play more of this though. I really want to know what Caprice's Act 2 is going to be like. Because I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I don't know what Caprice was doing in this time period apart from big picture. Apart from dramatic big picture moment. That's the only thing I know. And that's not going to be the only thing she's been doing all, all over Christmas. So this is going to be a bit of an adventure, I think. I think it's going to be an adventure. But yes, before we start, either way, I'm, I'm going to do something myself. Because nobody else did it. And I want to. There we go. I hit myself in the head. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate redeem, Liri. That's so nice of you to look out for me. Hold on. Oh my goodness, that was loud. Yay! I've got my monster. I've got my ultra fiesta. We've got the, the, the bluest can I have. <laughs> for Caprice's root. And I must stay hydrated. So I don't dehydrate. <laughs> Oh, Nicolia, take care. Glad hearing from you. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I could make you happy. I'm glad you decided to stop in. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, too. Thank you for thank you for dropping dropping by and saying hi and giving head pats. I do love the head pats. I, I think the head pat is one of my favorite redeems. I want to make more like that. More like interactive ones where you can like drop things. Well, I've got the ones where you drop things on my head. I've already got that. Maybe I could do like a little hammer, like a little like bomb hammer to hit me on the head when I when I misbehave or when the brain cells get stuck and they need like a little a little bop to get them going again. <laughs> All right, anyway, I'm ready to load the game. I've had the screen open for like 5 minutes now. It's fine. And this is called this chapter is called shared feelings. Are they going to realize? Are they going to realize yet? They, they, these two are being so tentative about everything. They are being so obvious that they like each other, and yet they're still just going around like, okay, but but what if what if not? Like I I think we like each other, but what if what if I'm misreading the signals? Best to just, um, I don't know. <laughs> It's okay, they'll realize it. Maybe Allison. I feel like Allison has definitely already realized. We we saw how incredibly subtle Allison was <laughs> at the at the zoo. <laughs> so maybe Allison will like really subtly set them up on a date or like lock them in a closet together. I mean what? <laughs> ha. The sun melts into the sky as it begins to set its hot, vivid colours contrasting the shades of blue and white sprinkled across the ground. My bag is filled to the brim with books. I'm on my way to sell them at a fraction of the cost I paid for them. The bliss of being rid of them will make up for the sunk cost, I'm sure. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that all the time. <laughs> it's still a little surreal after stressing about it for so long. I wasn't even sure I'd make it through the semester, let alone successfully. I let it through. Yeah, make it through the semester, let alone successfully. Now I'm only a short time away from collecting my associate's degree. <gasps> yes, Olive, let's go. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Where am I going next? I don't actually know. I still have a semester to think it over, but it's about time to look at universities or jobs to apply to. Time doesn't stop just because you hit a milestone. Uh, their their face, it's they them pronouns. But I yeah, this is like I think this is like a framing sequence. We're just thinking at the moment. This is not 
like a moment happening. We're we're deep in Olive's thoughts. I th I think it's meant to be framed like this. <laughs> I wouldn't be here without Caprice and the art club. What about that? What happens with them next? Caprice said she wants to continue meetings through the winter break, but... Despite my reservations about whether or not I fit in with a group of artists, I've come to look forward to being with them. Yeah, you made friends. <laughs> You're friends with them. It's nice. I owe it mostly to the club's atmosphere. As much as art is the theme of its meetings, the heart of it is friendship. It is. It is. I hope they've warmed up to me, too. Caprice, especially. For no particular reason. Like, <laughs> no, no, no particular reason. Just, I, I hope Caprice likes me. Despite the stress, the days spent with her this past semester stick out vividly as happy memories. Each and every one. What, even even her and Millie duking it out in the hallway? <laughs> the club was part of that, for sure, but there's more to it than that. Whenever I boarded the trolley and she wasn't there, I felt a little disappointed. When she was, my heart flipped just a tiny bit. We talked about bringing our books back today, but we didn't plan on going together. The trolley starts to pull up, and I find myself hoping that I see her as it comes into view. <laughs> I don't know, Olive, that's kind of gay. I say with the biggest smile. Ollie! <gasps> yeah! I knew it. I knew it. And there she is. Oh, that's super cute! And now we can see their face. Look, oh, the little smile. The little smile that they get immediately when they hear Caprice's boys. That, those kind of moments are the ones where I'm just like, oh, I love this. I love it so much. Also, Lance Owen, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome on in. Welcome to Act 2 of Caprice's Root in Two Fall Tuesday. I'm, I, I love this game. I love these people. I love, I love everything about this. Even when I'm suffering, I still love this game. But it's like, I think we have... We're gonna have a little moment of things going really nicely and things going well before everything kicks off. We're we're gonna have these like calm before the storm moments. <laughs> so I'm gonna enjoy them while I see them. When things are good, I remember the good times. It's trolley time. Hi. Hey, riding buddy. Campus business, buddy. I've got some club paperwork to take care of. They'll recognize us officially next semester for sure. Yes, official club! I proudly ta tap my backpack. I'm returning books. Good riddance. Get him out of here. You made it through. Congrats on passing. She throws her hands up in an adorably exaggerated jeer. Thanks, but you already said that. She could say it again. Oh. There we go, I'm back to normal. <laughs> oh, the, the the program got really confused for a second then. It was like, hold on, are you a magical girl today? No, oh, oopsie, my bad. Okay, I'm, I'm back to big again, no more chibi. My head is no longer full of explosives. I hope. <laughs> if anyone's confused by that, it's... There's, um... Xander and I have been playing Divinity on Fridays. Uh, there's enemies in that which are just like... Tiny chippy skeleton things with bombs on their backs. And it just became a joke that, like, whenever you see a really cute chibi model, there's one of those terrifying creatures inside them. That is the skeleton of a chibi. And then, because they have bombs, it also means that the chibi's heads are full of explosives. So, uh, don't provoke a chibi. They may look cute and cuddly, but their heads are full of explosives. That's why they're so big. <laughs> Anyway, that's completely unrelated to this lovely, sweet moment at the moment. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, the tangents are already beginning. Well, to be fair, at least I have started the game before half an hour's passed. I'm proud of myself for that. <laughs> I know, but twice won't hurt. Or three times. Yeah. Just keep congratulating them. 
Her arms go up and down and up again to emphasize each exclamation. Thank you, thank you. Take a bow. What's next for you? Good question. She's asked this before, and I'm still not quite sure how to answer. For a while, I wasn't even sure if there'd be a next step after this semester, so I honestly haven't been committing much brain power to it. I... don't know. Will you still come to club meetings? Of course. Expression eager, she leans in closer to me. I try not to lean away. I at least know what my short-term plans are. The winter meetings? Yeah. yeah. I answer without hesitation. She smiles widely, giving the setting sun some competition. Oh, <laughs> That's so cute. Wait, I love that line. Yes! I'm so glad you're staying aboard. Yay. The feeling's mutual. Of course. What? Did you think I'd just <laughs> use you for grades and leave? Yeah, that, that would be rude. Who would do that? Nah, not you. You wouldn't do that. I don't think Olive would be able to do that if they tried. Like, they would feel too guilty. If they did that, they would probably, like, do something else for Caprice either way as well. Like, they, they wouldn't be able to, like, leave a debt unsettled, I think. <laughs> it's the same way I am. I'm like, if, if someone does something for me, like, I... Even if there's no obligation or expectation to, like, pay it back or anything, I still want to. Just because that feels like the right thing to do. Like, I don't like taking without giving. I, 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 oh, it's, I always want to give back if I receive something, like, in some way. <laughs> she trusted me that much? Oh. It paid off. The art club's latest, greatest member. Greatest, yes. More and more, Caprice's little uplifts and compliments start to feel believable. Or at least, they seem to be hitting me differently than they used to. Oh. Hardly greatest. <laughs> Everyone's the greatest, Ollie. Oh. You would say that. She would, and I love it. She grins at me as the trolley comes to a stop at our destination. But there's only one president. Yes. The best. The best art club president. We disembark the trolley together, stretching in unison as we do. Hey, let's meet back at the club room later. Okay. Is anyone else here today? Not that I know of. Oh? Just us. Alright then. See you later. Just us indeed. Hold on. I need to sit up straight. I'm I'm slouching. Why am I slouchy? I gotta sit up. There we go. Okay. Uh, for for midwinter, Capri seems a bit lightly dressed. This is how I dress in winter. <laughs> That's how I would dress in winter. I I don't feel the cold. I would wear an outfit like that. I'd probably even have one less hoodie. <laughs> but uh, it's like if you look at her, she's like she's got a top on and she's got a hoodie and she's got another hoodie on top of that too. She's layering up at least. So I think I think it's reasonable. Oh, thank you for the posture check! Yeah, let me stretch as well while I sit up straight. The only straight thing here at the moment. <laughs> yeah, have you seen Capri zip and zoom around? She runs warm. Yeah, I, I feel like she would get so hot so easily because she's just everywhere all the time. It's probably why she wears layers. Honestly, it's it's a good, a good plan. Like, I like layering up in winter because... If you just have like one big coat and then that coat turns out to be too much, but you've only got like a light shirt on underneath, you're kind of stuck if you have to take the coat off and you don't have like a lighter jacket or anything. You're kind of just stuck being either slightly too cold or slightly too warm. Which is why I like layers. Also, Popo, hello. Thank you for the resub for the 11 months. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, how's it going? 
Welcome. I hope you're doing well. Layers are so nice. Yeah, I, I really love layering clothes. I'm I'm a big fan of it. I, I feel like every single outfit I own is... I have like a very specific formula <laughs> for making outfits. Like for the, the clothes I wear myself. I have a really specific like way that I always make all of my outfits. And it's always a, a light top, either like a strappy top or a t-shirt. And then a cardigan or a jacket. And then a skirt or shorts and then either colored or plain tights and then a pair of boots and that's all my outfits that's every outfit i own every outfit i own has the same formula of like top outer layer shorts or skirt tights boots everything i wear the only time that ever changes is if i'm wearing a dress <laughs> instead of a top and skirt or a top and shorts <laughs> it's the only time it ever changes i don't really wear trousers i i literally only bought a pair of trousers like two weeks ago now and before then i didn't have any trousers in my wardrobe i just don't wear trousers unless they're pajamas no i have plenty of pajama trousers but i don't feel like they they count but no i always wear skirts or shorts i don't know what it is i don't know why I just like them, I guess. I just, I, I have the clothes that I like to wear and I just keep wearing them. <laughs> anyway, uh, layers are good. Back to the game. Bye. <laughs> ah. Wait, so that's a date. We're meeting up in the art room later for a date. Yes. She makes her way inside, leaving me alone at the gate. As quickly as the stress of making it through the semester left me, another anxiety was quick to take its place. That'll be as good a time as any to talk about things. Oh, I, I think they're going to ask about the Millie situation. Ha. <sighs> I dump my near-empty backpack on the floor and take a seat in what's become my usual chair. The art club room is illuminated by the setting sun through the blinds of the window. I've seen this room in this light before, but something about it now feels a little bit sad. It's not just the end of the day, but the end of the semester. It's not the end of the art club, though. I couldn't leave even if I wanted to. The bouncy sound of footsteps alerts me to the reason why com uh, al alerts me to the reason why coming up the hallway to join me in the room. <sighs> it's good to be done with that. I hate dealing with that stuff. Yeah. Uh, the admin side of things. See, this is where I differ because I am the kind of person where I would hate a club role like Caprice's, like being like the president, the the head at the front of the the club. But I would love to be the one doing all of the admin stuff in the forms. Like I'm, I like filling out forms. That that would be my side. The the behind the scenes, organizing. She plops down in a seat near me. It's part of the job, unfortunately. Eileen likes to do it instead usually. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, I feel like Eileen would be like, "You're not gonna do it right. Let me." <laughs> likes to uh -huh. yeah I, th I think it is more of like eileen would just be like just let me do it i can i know i can actually do it well well it's all over now <sighs> yep <sighs> slouching lower she lets out a great sigh she looks around the room so i follow her lead and do the same I try to take in the image of painted canvases, both finished and unfinished. Most are Eileen's, though I recognize some of Allison's. There's a few posters around, uh, a few posters about some of Caprice's distinct style, along, alongside a small handful of Wallace's prints. The whiteboard in half smudged writing reads step one, listen, step two, draw. <laughs> it's good advice. I wonder how many more times we'll be back here. Not many, huh? 
as many as you want. <laughs> We've got next semester at least. Hmm. She doesn't seem too sure about that. She allows herself a moment of melancholy as her eyes sweep across the room. Well, it's not like we need this room to get together. So true. Just as quick as it's gone, uh, just as quick as it's gone, her usual cheerful self is back again, quite literally hopping back to attention as her eyes catch mine again. Definitely. Yeah. I feel like there are things I want to say, but I don't really know how to say them. It's hard to even articulate it to myself. Say, Ollie. I don't know if I really get it. There's this desire, this need almost to speak up, but without knowing what will come out of my mouth once I do so, it's impossible to rehearse the words in my head. I've been thinking. Oh? All I can do is pull the trigger and see where this goes. Olive is just... They are so in their own thoughts right now. <laughs> Caprice is about to just go for it anyway. All I can do is pull the trigger and see where this goes. Um, so, listen. I know it hasn't been that long. I think she's gonna beat him to it. <laughs> hey, Caprice. Sorry, but... Can I ask you something? Oh, please. Oh, my goodness, these two. <laughs> oh, these two. I love them. <laughs> I love them, but they're hopeless in the best way. I. Olive fully doesn't even realize that Caprice was about to confess to them, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> she looks slightly taken aback. It's at this point I realize I've kind of interrupted her. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, continue. Huh. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Really? I didn't mean to. Just kiss already. It's fine. It's fine. Please. Please. <laughs> ah. Caprice Path is an apology to those who don't like fake dating. Millie is an apology to those who don't like over the top absolute much. Oh, it's great. Yeah, they're, they're both so different. This one is just like the, the fully awkward, like, okay, I like you, but do you like me? I think you like me, but I don't know if you like me. Do you like me? I think you like me. You like me, but I'm not sure if you like me. But I like you. But do you like me? Maybe it's best not to speak up in case you don't like me, but I like you. I hope you like me. <laughs> oh, I... I, I as infuriating as it is, I love it. I love it. I love it so much. They, they're gonna get there, but it's gonna be extremely awkward. <laughs> I am more than willing to keep going in circles, but with how much she's stammering, it feels like it'll be futile to try and push her into it. I mean, I can go first. That's fine, right? I had the words in my head, but... Ugh. <laughs> What were you going to ask? <sighs> That's too embarrassing and way too forward. There's no way I could do that. She'd probably think it's weird anyway. It's no good to keep things in. True. She's right, of course. Her energy and determination seeps into everything she says and does. And I find myself feeding off that as my resolve steals. Now or never. They're going to do it again, aren't they? In fact... They're gonna do it again. In fact! I like you. Would you wanna go on a date sometime? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Ah. Uh, finally. I feel like I can't even say anything. I'm, I'm here like... Joking like, oh, they're so infuriating. I can't believe they're like this. But I feel like if I was in a situation like this, like if, if there's ever anyone I am romantically interested in, I would be the exact same way. I would just be a little floundering mess. I, <laughs> I really can't say anything. I'm, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know what to say. 
Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look how much they're blushing. I love this. Look how much her, her whole face is red now. She yells even more high-pitched than usual. Oh, no, no, no. No, I was going to say that. <laughs> you still can. You still can. Flip it back. Like a date? Like a date date? Yeah. Like dating? <laughs> oh, I love her. I love these two. I love this. <laughs> totally Caprice has three blush variants. There's blush, blush two, and super blush. <laughs> it really was super blush. It's just like uh, her face is a blush now. This, uh, that is that is her. She has become blush. Master of embarrassment. Captain of flustered. She has something of a frantic look as she moves about anxiously. Her face is bright red, and she laces and unlaces her fingers together in an uncharacteristically nervous fashion. How do you how do you flap the unflappable? Caprice, who's always so in control and the one taking the reins. It's it's kind of fun to see her like this. <laughs> it's really fun to see her like this, actually. Cause she know she would have a way better idea of how to go about things. If she was the one who said it, but then Olive stepped in and said it first, so now she doesn't <laughs> now she doesn't know how to react. <laughs> and I love that. Also, Bob, hello! Back for five minutes. Oh, it's so good to see you. Hi. You came at a great time. Um, they're confessing. They're confessing to each other. And it is so cute. They both tried to confess at the same time. And then interrupted each other. And then did it again. <laughs> Oh, yes, you jo yeah, you joined at the, the best time. Like, I'm, I'm glad you can be here for a little bit as well. But like, if you're if you're looking after your kid as well, I, I fully understand the lurking. Please don't feel like you have to be around. <laughs> but yeah, of, of all the times for you to return, this is probably one of the best ones. This is a very good moment. Uh, yes. Yes, date date. She holds her face in her hands and shakes her head. Is that a no? No. You... you interrupted me! You can't just get the jump on me like that! That's not fair! Wait, hold on. Y you told me to go first with how much you were trying to force it out of me. I figured you'd caught on. Oh, oh amazing. No! <sighs> I was just saying things! I've been psyching myself up for a while! They both have! They both were! <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I'm gonna go, go play Minecraft with him. Oh, I hope you have fun! Build nice things. Go, go kill some skeletons or something. <laughs> I hope you have fun, though. Thank you for stopping in. I'm glad you've been having a good, a good time. Good break. <laughs> I love this too. I, this is so funny. This is the funniest. So it's a yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> and despite the snowfall outside, it feels like I'm about to melt from overheating. I must be blushing head to toe. Honestly, I think Caprice's reaction there would be my reaction if someone I liked confessed to me someone I like confessed to me, I would probably also just scream and turn around and hide. <laughs> <sighs> and so is she. Obviously. Okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> cool. It's like, yeah, I like you. We're going out. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, what now? <laughs> she smiles a little shyly, and it's a new kind of brilliant. Somehow she keeps showing me new ways to glow. That's so 
cute. Oh. Oh. Here we go, act two. Watercolors. Oh, that's such a perfect act name. Oh, that's so perfect for, for Caprice. I love this. Okay. They did it, finally. Oh, yeah. This is so exciting! <laughs> finally. Finally. See, it's so funny because at this point in Millie's route as well, we had also had a confession. But it was a fake confession for fake dating. So it's very different this time. Because, yeah, all of Act 2 pretty much was fake dating. Right up to, like, the very end of it. It was it was all fake dating. But honestly, Millie and Olive wouldn't have been able to do anything if they hadn't had that fake dating, I think. I think they needed that. Because that helped them realize, actually, maybe it's not fake. And they, they wouldn't do it otherwise. They'd be too, too flustered. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but... The moment she stepped into the diner, I had a feeling. But it already feels like I'm not doing enough. Oh. As quick as I was to immediately jump to dating, I was just as eager to pass the buck to her when she offered to pick the place. Even if she jumped at the chance, I've still been feeling guilty over not being able to commit to something myself and leaving the burden of choice to her. Okay, Olive, but see, to you, it is the burden of choice. To Caprice, it is the power of being in charge, which she likes. So you don't have to feel guilty. <laughs> well, she has to handle it, right? Did you have anywhere in mind yourself? I don't know, somewhere nice? Great, yes. Expensive nice? Yes? I mean... You're college students, honey. <laughs> I love that you can hear the exasperation in her voice. <laughs> it's a first date, though. Yeah. The idea of a first date is, what would she like? What would she enjoy? Do you think Caprice would like to be stuck in a stuffy, expensive restaurant? Or do you think she would like pizza? Just saying. <laughs> Expensive restaurant is definitely a cliche, but the fact that it is a cliche makes me feel like it would have been a safe bet, which is something I feel like I desperately need to not screw up first impressions. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese all the way. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm the kind of person where like, I would rather have a cheap, but thoughtful gift or date than an expensive one just for show. Like, I, I would feel really awkward going to an expensive restaurant. If anyone invited me to, like, a really fancy restaurant on a first date, I'd be like, well, I guess you don't know me. <laughs> hmm. I'm the type to just be like, hey, in instead of going out for a meal, can we, like, make sandwiches and have a picnic? <laughs> Uh, well, the first date, though, is to get to know you. Oh, I, I guess, like, in, like, general dating standards, that does make sense. But uh, I feel like I'm the kind of person where I wouldn't be able to date someone I didn't already know very well, if that makes sense. Like, I'm more like, I guess it's, is it demisexual, I think is the term? It's like the term where it's like you, you don't really like form a bond or an attachment with someone until you really like get to know them really well. Like I I don't do just like dating people. I, I don't see someone and go, oh, I want to go out with you because I don't know what they're like. I, I always need that connection first. But then it always ends up getting to the point where like <laughs> anyone I might be interested in, I end up just becoming really good friends. And then I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't actually think romance would work. I, I think we're fine just being friends, so <laughs> I kind of cheat myself out of romance. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I, I, I don't think I'd be able to date someone I didn't at least know a little bit about. 
But this isn't about me. This is about Caprice. This is about Olive. And this is why I think their first date should be at the aquarium. <laughs> or a pet shop, honestly. Go to a pet shop with loads of fish. Do you think Caprice would have been impressed by somewhere expensive? I don't think she would care. No. Yeah. Without question, that's not something Caprice cares about. No one knows what Caprice likes better than Caprice herself. If she offered, just trust in her and go with the flow. Yeah! Right. I wish she'd at least tell me what she has in mind. I don't want to underprepare or overprepare. And ask her. I didn't even think about overpreparing <laughs> until now. God. Oh, Olive, I. This is very cute. They are overthinking this so much. And it's very cute. But also, I, I feel like Caprice will probably also be overthinking it a little bit. I can just imagine Caprice being like, Oh, but I was thinking I could do this. Oh, but would Olive like that? Maybe Olive would prefer if we do this. And and then Haley's just stood there going, Yep. Yep. I'm sure. Maybe ask them. <laughs> Uh, this is your brain half the time. Honestly, it's my brain all the time. I'm very good at overthinking. It's the problem. The games are always so relatable. Like, <laughs> this game is so relatable in so many ways. Like, I genuinely cannot think of another game I've played where I have related so much with so much of the cast. Like, this, this, it's top of the list. It is top of the list for that. For relatability with characters. I can't think of one that beats it. I love this game, and I still haven't even finished it. <laughs> I still haven't finished it yet. All right, overthinking, Ollie. You're overthinking things again, sweetie. I inhale deeply. I'm sure if she had something concrete in mind, she'd tell you. Have faith that Caprice knows you well enough to not put you on the spot like that. Yeah. I exhale. Remember. What you end up doing doesn't matter. The point is just being together. Yeah. Be yourself and you'll be fine. Okay? Oh, what a great mom. What great advice. I'm so glad. I love August. I love I love all of the parents in this, honestly. It's so good. Oh, except... No, no, that was the parents in First Snow. That's not in this. That's fine. I was going to say, I'm not a fan of Eileen's mom. <laughs> but that's fine. Yes. All right. Okay. Relax and enjoy yourself. If you aren't having fun, then she won't be either. You're excited, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, no, I could see that happening, though. Like, they're both so anxious about making it good for each other, and then they sense each other's anxiety and make themselves more anxious. Oh, please don't let it end up like that. That's one word for it. Anxious, nervous, and sick to my stomach are all also potential winners. Well, I'm excited for you. Tell me all about it, okay? Oh, yes. Of course, Mom. Love you. Oh. I love you, too. Good luck. They're gonna need it, thanks. <laughs> Despite everything, at least I can say I'm looking forward to it. Even if I'm not sure what it is yet. Caprice jump scare. Hi. Uh -huh. I step off the trolley and am quickly greeted by my date. Trying to get used to thinking in terms like that still throws my mind for a loop, no matter how much I try to force it into normalcy. Ollie, Ollie, Ollie! Caprice, Caprice, Caprice. It's, it's kind of hard to say like that. Cappy. Caprice Reesey? Hmm, I don't know. She rushes over and just about tackles me into a hug. Despite the Ollie alarm going off, I'm taken by surprise by the suddenness of it all the same. Ollie, Ollie, Ollie! Hi! Uh, hello! <laughs> she pulls away, looking a little bit red. 
If she's a faint shade, I must look like the surface of the sun. Caprice is dressed up in her usual streetwear, and I'm immediately thankful I won the coin flip to decide to not wear anything special myself. We walk side by side, close enough to combat the evening chill. Any trouble getting here? Nope. Uh, quiet ride. How about you? A quiet ride, too. Aww. It feels entirely different when she says it. I'd been told Millie offered to drive her today, which surprised me. Okay, actually... That doesn't surprise me. I think Millie will notice. Like, if, if Caprice is like, hey, I'm going out with someone now, Millie will be like, okay. Okay, that means you're gonna stop bothering me? Because you'll be focused on them? Which is what she would want. Maybe it won't be as dreadful as I... as I keep imagining. No, it's still gonna be dreadful, but... <laughs> Oh, I was hoping it was a sign that things were finally cooling down between them, but it seems as much of a sore spot as ever. As we continue our walk, I try to find a good place to ask where exactly we're headed, as Caprice walks leisurely, glancing from place to place like she's looking for something. Oh, how about we head inside here? Oh? Caprice stops, tugging at my shoulder to ensure I follow suit. We've landed right outside of the small cafe Caprice would occasionally bring us to over the course of the semester. How about it? Mm -hmm. What's up? Uh, I, uh, I thought when you said you wanted to pick the place, you had somewhere in mind. Jumping to conclusions is always. <laughs> I didn't have a single idea where to go. Oh, that's great. Yeah, no pressure. Just wander. Just see where it takes you. Oh, Caprice. That's so great. I love how much Olive has been overthinking this and Caprice is just like, let's, let's, let's go wherever. Going on a date. Let's, let's go uh, see where see where whimsy takes us. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, she's just going with the flow. Yeah. It's a very Caprice thing to do. It's very Caprice for for her to say, don't worry, I'll I'll sort out where we're going on the date and then just be like, okay, we're going in this direction. <laughs> and after that, I have no clue. Oh. <laughs> Finding inspiration along the way is kind of our thing, right? Oh, wait, that's so true. That's so true. Oh, I love that. She gives me a light nudge at that. All that worry over nothing. I was overthinking it. You're right. Uh, you're, you're right. Are you sure you're okay with this for a first date, though? It's not exactly unfamiliar territory. We usually just grab something quick and head out, though. Yeah. We can try their sit-in stuff, so it'll feel different. And you know you like the stuff from there, so it's a safe bet. Like, imagine going to a new place on a first date, and it's just awful. And then that's just the memory of your first date then. Like this this is like a nice memory to have. Besides, familiar is yeah. good. It was either this, the pizza place, or the aquarium, and a cafe feels more I don't know, romantic than a pizzeria. What did I say? I, I said the pizza place. Or the aquarium. I I literally said these two. I'm Me and Caprice, we got we got the mind link right now. Caprice mind link. I I know what she's thinking. I love that I even used the pizza place as an example when I mentioned the expensive restaurants. <laughs> uh. What about the aquarium, then? Yeah, you could still go. That place is extremely important to me. I can't just take you there from the get-go. You gotta work up to that. Okay, that makes sense. You dragged me there when we were basically strangers. Okay, but that wasn't a date totally different context. You were merely my student, and it was a valuable educational experience. Now you're my... Now you're my snookums. Now you're my little, uh, pumpkin baby boo. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm so sorry. What am I... 
What is wrong with me? Why did I say that? Give me a sec. I need brain cells. What is happening? Olive is now known as Pumpkin Baby Boo. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Uh. Partner? It's comforting to know that even someone like Caprice is having as much trouble navigating parts of this as I am. The least I can do is offer an out we're likely both desperately searching for at this point. I'm freezing. What's that inside? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, I love them. I really love their awkwardness. It really is like the... There's something so charming about it. <laughs> It's so like just genuine. There's so there's so much genuine emotion in there and it's really sweet. The tiny table is littered with a handful of pastries, mostly gravitating towards Caprice's side, and a couple of ceramic cups. Though identical, it's easy to figure out which belongs to who. Caprice's looks only vaguely like coffee, and is otherwise filled with what must be a dozen different kinds of sweeteners. Caprice, me too. Me too. Me too. I only drink coffee if you can't tell there's coffee in there. <laughs> I've watched it like ten times. Ten times? Really? Yeah! It's so good. Come on, you have to watch it at least once. Oh? It's not usually my kind of thing. I'll make you watch it with me. What is it? What What are you watching? Oh, yeah? I, re I love this expression on Caprice so much. I <laughs> this face is my favorite. I want to make this face for myself. I want, I want to make these little eyes and just have like a toggle so I can just have the... Strapped to a chair, eyes taped open, the whole nine yards if I gotta. Don't test her, she will. We managed to settle into a groove I can only describe as surprisingly normal, given how flustered we were upon entering. Conversations about nothing in particular come and go, each other's presence being more important than any individual subject matter that comes up. I quiet myself with a sip of the cafe's house blend. I can't wait to tell everyone else. Tell them why? <laughs> that you're dating! That we're dating! Uh, well... Oh... You don't want to? You don't want to? Why? Her dejected tone immediately tells me that wasn't the way to go. It's not that. I'm just... Nervous. Never done this before. <laughs> They're our friends. They'll be happy to know. Yeah, I know. It's just a lot all at once. Yeah. It took all my confidence just to tell my mom. So you can imagine. They're like family too. It'll be easy. It'll be easy, especially if you just let Caprice do the talking. Honestly, just, just let her say. That's right. To Caprice, the club is a vital part of her life. The other members are my friends too, though I'm still getting to know them in ways. This is our first date, so I haven't even had time to think about delivering the news. How could I when it doesn't even feel entirely real to me yet? You know, when Allison and Eileen started dating, Allie eventually told me they had a small back and forth about whether to tell me right away or not. Oh. Yeah, I understood, of course. Everyone has their own pace with these kind of things, I think. But we should definitely break the news as soon as you're comfortable with it. Yeah, I agree. I feel kind of bad for Wallace. <laughs> He's going to be the, the third wheel in the art club. <laughs> It'll probably be a little embarrassing, but speaking from experience, I'm willing to bet they're just waiting in the wings for something official to come out so they can support us properly. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Allison already knows, so. <laughs> oh, wait, no, unless Wallace is Wall Ace. 
then he wouldn't feel left out because he wouldn't be interested. Maybe it's... Uh -huh, maybe, okay. I think back to our finals projects in Rio. Caprice hit it a bit better than me, but I feel like I couldn't have been more obvious. I guess we weren't exactly subtle about things, huh? Subtlety. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe that's good. Being obvious is better for the matters of the heart. True, yes, I like that. <laughs> Wallace is just a guy. He's just there, thriving by existing. I love that. I love that for him. I think the art club definitely needs a Wallace. It's like every time I think of Wallace, I really do think of Eileen and Wallace as like having that sibling relationship, like that kind of family. <laughs> so it's, it's really nice how everyone's connected in different ways, but all connected like in the same group. It really does feel very family. It's very found family. And I'm a sucker for found family tropes. <laughs> My favorite trope in anything, like, give me a group of misfits who have banded together and made their own family, and I'm just like, yes, I'm, I'm consuming that. I'm gonna slurp that up, yes, thank you. <laughs> you think so? I don't want to keep her waiting when it's obvious how much she wants to tell everyone. If nothing else, I've always been able to count on Caprice to teach me to run before I learn to crawl. So maybe it'll be easier to make that call with her, uh, with her there. We can tell them next time we all get together. I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them. Don't force yourself to do it for my sake. She says, trying and failing to hide the excitement in her tone. That's fine. Like you said, it's probably not even news anyway. Yeah. I mean, it might be to Wallace. Maybe. I don't know, because Wallace, Wallace knew with Allison and Eileen, because Eileen was talking to him. I wonder if he would have noticed. He might just be like, oh, huh. Okay. Good for you. <laughs> She's given up trying to mask her enthusiasm, reaching over the table to grab my hand. It's a miracle neither of our cups get knocked over in the process. I knew I could count on you. You keep saying that. Yeah. Haven't proven me wrong yet. Against all odds. Ollie. I expect her grip to loosen as her voice quiets. To my surprise, she holds my hands even tighter. You were at every meeting, even the ones you knew weren't going to help you at all. I know some of that was because of your situation, but it doesn't change the fact that you were reliable. Oh. I started taking the trolley after Millie and I started fighting. It used to be the worst part of my day. When you started joining me, it turned into the highlight. Haha, <laughs> I love this. It's like, bittersweet because of the whole Millie situation, but I... Uh, I love that. Part of me was worried it was only temporary, that you'd eventually start taking your bike again or leave earlier in the day. But you never did. From the first day of snow to the last day of school, I could always count on you to be there. It's... The snow. She closes her eyes, taking a deep breath before opening them again. Well, it's what I love about you. She's already said it! The first date! <laughs> the first date! The first date just... Caprice is, she is genuinely just here like, well, I'm not letting them beat me to the punch this time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I, uh, what? Huh? How do I respond to that? My heart pounds in my chest. And as my thoughts begin to swirl, I focus on our interlocked hands and give hers a gentle squeeze. The last thing I want is for her to interpret my silence as anything but positive. I want to return the favor, to tell her how the time spent with her was the best part of the semester, that she helped me forget about my worries, even if it was only for a couple hours every school day. As clear as the words are in my head, 
I can't quite piece them together aloud. Every time I consider opening my mouth, everything suddenly feels like a jumbled mess. There's something, though. It's small. She deserves more. But it's the one thing I can say with absolute clarity. I love you, too. So cute. Oh, that's so cute. She gives a small gasp as her grip loosens on my hands. She smiles wider than I've ever seen her smile before, only to have it shrink and shrivel as she takes a sip of her drink. Oh. Ah. It go cold? No, it just tastes too much like coffee. I really relate with Caprice so much. I'm. Um, I only like coffee when you can't taste coffee. <laughs> what? But there's hardly any coffee in that. Your cup is like 99% sugar. We've been a couple for less than three hours and you're already trying to break my heart. I slide a cookie from my side of the table over to her as a peace offering, which she's quick to accept. Our conversations dip back into random bits and bobs as the sky changes color over the city. Oh. The trolley drops us off a couple blocks from Caprice's apartment, just as the sun vanishes from sight. We walk the rest of the distance to her place, fingers intertwined and smiles on our faces. Well, Olive? Caprice? Yes? I had fun! Yay! Me too. Maybe we could do it again. Maybe. Mayhap. Definitely. But you're in charge next time. Okay, pizza it is. <laughs> this morning feels like it's a lifetime ago. I completely forgot I was upset about that. Thankfully, I feel like after today, I have a better read on the kind of experiences Caprice cherishes. I think you have an outstanding <gasps> IOU for cooking lessons. Wait, yes! Yes, oh my goodness, cooking lesson date. Get a bit of cream on her nose, and wipe it off, stare lovingly into each other's eyes. <laughs> Hopefully don't burn things down. Outstanding is right. I have high hopes. It's date. <laughs> I love the way they said that. Sure is. She motions me closer, and I oblige. Oh. <gasps> ah! Finally! Finally! Can't even see it, but... <laughs> Yay! And hello! Thank you for the confetti. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, why you hold your hat there? Stop it. Stop it. Put your hat down. Put your hat down. Why? <laughs> oh, finally. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Even with the build up to it, our kiss still doesn't fail to take me by surprise. My chest feeling fit to burst with warmth as our lips meet. The start of the semester feels like it was a million years ago. The worries and fears hung heavy on me the entire time. A lot of it was self-inflicted, I know. But even if it wasn't, when I think about all the time spent stressing about the situation and being terrified of letting the people closest to me down, and then bringing myself back to right here, right now, in this moment, it was worth it. Mom was right. The irony of it all is pretty silly. I spend so long in my thoughts that before I know it, Caprice pulls away and her eyes open to meet mine once again. Good night, Ollie. Good night. Good night. As I'm still recovering from her surprise, I wave and watch her enter her apartment. 
The warmth I'm feeling right now will be enough to stave off the cold until I can find my way home. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I love them. I'm so glad. <laughs> ah, ah, I can't stop smiling too. <laughs> like I said, it's like I, I know what is to come. I know how much stuff there is to come. So these moments, these moments right here, I'm grabbing them with both hands and I'm clinging to them and I'm going to enjoy them. <laughs> ah. Between the different proteins, spices, and vegetables, the bag of ingredients I've brought is nigh bursting with potential. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do with all of this yet, but I wanted to leave Capri some options as to what she wanted to try making first. Yeah, just a bit of everything. I give a gentle knock on her apartment door with my free hand, eager to get our second date underway. Sure, it's only been a couple days since our last date. Maybe it's a bit fast, but neither of us are too worried about that. Or more accurately, without classes as an excuse to see each other every day, it feels longer than usual. Any excuse, any excuse to go over. The door's quick to open, as expected of someone like Caprice. Oh. Oh. Ah! Hi! Oh. Except when it's Haley, I guess. When we were planning this the other day, Caprice said her roommates would be out for a bit so the kitchen would be less crowded. Maybe she got her days mixed up? Not who you were expecting? Uh... I... Uh... uh... <laughs> They're so flustered. It's okay. I was hoping you were someone else, too. Oh, thanks. That's nice. She always knows just what to say. <laughs> As Haley for you. Oh, I, I love it. Oh, amazing. Also, Gambler, hello! Thank you for the lurk! Thank you for stopping by, I hope you're doing well. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> Haley opens the door the rest of the way and steps aside, beckoning me in. Uh, oh, 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 oh. You know how I literally just said, I know stressful times are to come, so I'm clinging to the happy ones. I don't think I should have said that. <laughs> I think... I think I may have just <laughs> tempted fate a little too much. Oh boy, okay. A quick scan of the room shows things are even more cramped than I'd thought they'd be. Millie's sitting almost motionless on the couch and Caprice across the room at their kitchen counter looking uncharacteristically grumpy. Oh, oh. The real surprise comes from Miss Shifton sitting alongside her daughter, matching Caprice's agitation with visible discomfort. What is happening? What is going on here? Before I have time to even begin to imagine what I've stepped into, Caprice's expression rapidly shifts after finally becoming aware of my presence. Oh, hey! At least she's smiling. At least she's smiling. Huh. She's quick to greet me with a hug. Between the sudden impact of her and the three sets of eyes I can feel on me, it feels as though I'm about to collapse on myself. Thankfully, a couple of pats on her back is enough of a signal for her to release me from her vice grip. The sudden smiles on everyone else in the room shows the damage has already been done, though. Guess the cat's out of the bag, huh? Yeah. It's been out of the bag since the second she got <laughs> home after you asked her out. 
<laughs> yeah, of course she would. Of course she would. This is Caprice. We know what happens when Caprice has exciting news. From a horrific experience. <laughs> uh, I would have been more surprised if she actually managed to avoid bringing it up with them. She got a free car ride out of it. Nice. I was happy for you two when she dropped the news. It was the least I could do. Hmm. The sincerity in her voice confuses me further. It's so hard to get a grasp on the relationship between these two. Every time they mention each other, it's an entirely different mood. Sorry for getting in your hair today. I know you two had something planned. Still have planned. Trust the process. Oh? I don't want to outright ask why they're still here if that's the case, but it'd be nice to get an answer regardless. Millie does me a favor and chimes in. Haley and I were headed out to prepare some paperwork for next semester, but my engine uh, wouldn't start this morning. My dad's taking uh, a look at it now. We should hopefully have some good news soon. Ah, uh, of course. And then Charlie was with Mike. As he came to take a look, of course, I see. I see how this has ended up like this now. Ha. Huh. That makes sense. Sorry for the bother. No bother at all. We aren't even supposed to be here right now. That explains most everything, except for the woman sitting silently in her little corner of the room. A far cry from her commanding presence at the aquarium. It's good to see you again, ma'am. Yeah, why are you here, huh? Oh, <laughs> the shock on her face makes me immediately second-guess the greeting. It's not a feeling I'm unfamiliar with. Maybe I should have just let her continue to sink into the background. As telling us her expression is, she quickly shakes it off and replaces it with a warm smile. Ma'am, it's worse than usual. <laughs> I told you first names are fine, right? Especially now that we're practically family. Mom! <laughs> as much as we go back and forth, it seems like Caprice's mom and her are even worse. Caprice's genuine embarrassment is pretty endearing, though. Alright, I'll try to get better at that. I'll hold you to it. <sighs> it's a little awkward. At least the mood has lightened a little compared to the sorry state of the room when I first walked in. One final question hangs in my mind before I can be confident I figured out everything about the situation. Oh no, what are they going to ask? I'm a little worried. What are they going to ask? So what brings you here today? Just hanging out? <laughs> Charlie's face freezes. Her expression twists and turns, trying to piece together an answer. Millie's father and I were grabbing lunch together when she called. I offered to stay behind, but... That's a very diplomatic way of wording this. <laughs> They're kind of a package deal nowadays. Is Caprice just gonna say it? She's a family friend. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Millie's unusually quick follow-up makes me nervous by itself, let alone when combined with Charlie's face deflating and Haley bringing her headphones over her ears. Oh no, Haley putting the headphones on is like the the biggest warning signal. It's like, okay, we drop this conversation now. We that is not a good sign. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate as well, Suzume. Oh, I, I need a drink after this. Oh my goodness. Ah. God, I'm gonna have two sips actually because I need the energy. <laughs> energy to deal with whatever is going on here. Oh my goodness. Ah. Oh, so many streams deep at this point, man. But just want me to know. He loved the Hydrate Redeem animation. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Just, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very helpful. 
I think my favorite moments for the hydrates are always when I'm like really deep in thought about something and then it just comes and clonks me on the head and I'm like, ah, thank you. <laughs> it started as like the silliest joke and then I was just like, well, I'm just keeping this forever now. <laughs> But yes, oh, thank you for the head fat to recover from the damage of a, a full monster can to the head. <laughs> it's okay, I'm a VTuber. We are incredibly resilient. I can just bounce back. You could probably drop an anvil on my head and I would be fine. <laughs> right, back to this. Nelly? Caprice? Thank you. <laughs> Caprice should probably drop this right now. This is not the moment for it. But I don't think she's going to. <laughs> well, she is, isn't she? What's your deal starting this now? With Olive here? Millie looks to me, then Caprice, her expression visibly softening, if only a little. After her small scan, Millie swivels her head back around, staring absent-mindedly at the powered-off television. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, sure you don't. <laughs> that makes two of us. Despite my ignorance, it's feeling increasingly obvious that something's on the verge of bubbling over. Can we please... Take this off the stove. Can we separate the, the the cooking ingredients? No, that that analogy fell apart as soon as it started. Never mind. <laughs> oh, oh, thank goodness. Thankfully, the rapping on the door behind me puts everything on pause as everyone turns their attention to it. Hi, Mike. Meeting everyone's eyes, it suddenly dawns on me that I'm right in front of the door. I turn around and slowly open it. <laughs> Hello. You are... Hi. Our height difference isn't that, da isn't that drastic, but the man at the door still feels like he handily towers over me. A stern expression hangs on his face, betrayed ever so slightly by the gentleness in his voice. His red coat, covered in oil, gives me enough context to make an educated guess as to who he is. Uh, hello. Hi, I'm Olive. Sorry. What a great introduction. I quickly step to the side to get out of his way. Oh, you must be Caprice's partner. Nice to meet you. Name's Mike. <laughs> so he knows too. <laughs> As he steps inside, he makes a point to shake my hand, leaving behind a giant oil stain. Between that and the bag of groceries in my other hand, I've effectively been left stranded. Olive. Just as you thought. It's an old girl showing her age. She's a tough one, though. Stay on top of the oil changes and you'll be all right. Yay, Junebug! I'm glad Junebug's okay. Poor Junebug. Will do. Thanks for taking a look. <laughs> Millie's dad gives a smile, glancing to Caprice and her mom across the room. He opens his mouth to say something, but Millie clears her throat loudly, cutting him off. Also, can I just say as well, I also really love how the parents are colour-coordinated as well. Like, Charlie's also wearing blue, Mike is also wearing red... August is also wearing green. I, I'm, a, I'm such a sucker for things that are color coded. I love, I love color coded things. I really like it. <clears throat> We'd better head out before it gets too late. Ready, Haley? <sighs> Haley gives the quickest nod I've ever seen and slides past Mike and I out the door. Can't say I blame her. <laughs> Millie stands up, grabs her coat from uh Millie stands up, grabs her coat by the nearby rack, and makes her exit, 
giving me a quick smile as the door closes behind her. Ugh, she's so... Millie? She's so Millie. Caprice? I'm still left dumbfounded by the entire ordeal. It felt like an argument was about to form from, what I can tell, a really innocent remark. And then it just dissolved at the drop of a hat. Did I miss something? <laughs> you arrived just in the nick of time. Ah, <sighs> Saved by the bell. Or the knock, I guess. Uh-huh. Well, I'm glad to hear it. He moves his way past me into the kitchen. You two can't keep this up forever. You're preaching to the choir. Am I now? The water starting from the kitchen sink pulls me out of my stupor and reminds me of the position I've been left in. Slowly, I approach the kitchen counter, gently placing the bag of ingredients down. Please don't notice me. <laughs> I gotta say, I just, I love that they were just holding the bag that whole time. They could have just put it on the floor. But they were so, probably just completely in shock from everything happening. They didn't even think about <laughs> putting the bag down. Alas, I was bound to be noticed eventually, waiting beside Mike for my turn to wash the grease off my hands. He turns to address me as he shakes away the water before reaching for a paper towel and allowing me sink access. So what brings you out here, Olive? <laughs> I mean, Caprice, I'd imagine, but you know, specifics. Cooking. He doesn't wait for an answer before taking a peek into my bag. Well, I told Caprice I'd teach her how to cook, so I brought over some stuff. Figured we could think of something to make between it and whatever they have lying about here. <laughs> I finish washing my hands just in time to see him unscrew the lid off a jar and give it a small sniff before closing it again and turning his attention to the fridge. Caprice and Charlie seem as bewildered as I am, giving a look to each other as he continues his rummaging. Oh, I bet he's gonna help, because we, we know Mike's a decent cook. He's gonna, he's gonna be like, hey, maybe you could use this. Uh... <laughs> you could throw some chicken parm yep. together with what you've got available. You ever make it? I knew it. <laughs> I just immediately got that impression from him. I was like, oh, this, this is the kind of dad who's just gonna be like, yeah, let, let me help you out with that. I'm proud of you. I... Yeah? The diner I work at has sandwiches, at least. You wanna handle the pasta and I'll help with the chicken? We could share notes. Mike, that's really nice of you. That's really sweet. <laughs> but... Um... Um... <laughs> Charlie. Charlie, please. Charlie, help. Charlie! <laughs> what? <laughs> Mike, this is supposed to be a date for them. Uh, bless him, he's, he, he's trying. He, he, I think he forgot. Or didn't realize. Just that little bit of obliviousness. That is so sweet that his first instinct was to help out though. Just being like, we were thinking of finding something to cook. His first thought was just like, oh, well, let me let me help you out with that. It's very, very genuinely sweet. If, if a little, um, not quite reading the atmosphere at this moment. Very nice of him. Also, Kira Boros, hello. Thank you for the head fat and also the hydrate. Let me have a sip of my drink. Welcome on in. I just say like, yes, Miss Shifton, ma'am. Please help. Ah. Da -da. Hello, hello. How's it going? Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. We're in Act 2 of Caprice's route at the moment. And I think we're probably going to find out about the marriage soon. 
I think Caprice is probably going to say something soon. So it's time for that reveal, but I'm very nervous. There was one heck of a, a situation just now that's only just been diffused. <laughs> but oh, I love this game so much. Uh, I hope I'm well. Oh, I am well, thank you. I hope you are as well. I uh, just fixed your keyboard and it's finally working correctly again. Oh, heck yes. I'm glad you managed to fix it. I'm glad it's all working out for you. Thank you for stopping in. Welcome aboard the the Caprice Olive roller coaster. And that's seemingly enough to stop him as he sheepishly closes the bridge. Oh, right, right. <laughs> I was still in work mode, sorry. He was just trying to help. It's very sweet. Just as I think we're slowly inching towards returning to our original plan, the laugh Caprice is clearly struggling to keep in gives me the impression we aren't out of the woods yet. Did I tell you the first time Ollie came over, they jumped right into cooking something too? Let's scratch the original plan. You two should totally do something together. What? Caprice. <laughs> Caprice, why? Oh, she just wants to fluster Olive, doesn't she? She fully, at this moment, 100%, she just wants to see Ollie flustered. I love this. Yes. It's time for Olive and Mike cooking. <laughs> but... Uh... There's always next time, it's fine. I'm a quick learner, we can start whenever. Doesn't have to be today. She gives me a cat-like grin, leaning forward from the table with entirely too much interest. Really? Charlie gives a shrug, accompanied by a small smile. <laughs> I share a glance with Mike, both of us knowing there's no real chance of walking this back. He starts removing his oil-ridden coat as I begin unpacking our necessary ingredients. Oh, Caprice, I... <laughs> I thought we were gonna have like a really sweet date night cooking mo- Okay, it is, it is still very sweet. It is still incredibly sweet. Did not expect a CG with Millie's dad? Gotta say, didn't expect major CG cooking with Millie's dad. If you'd asked me what kind of situations I would have expected from this stream, it wouldn't even be on the list. I did not see this coming. <laughs> but I'm really glad it has, actually. I really love this. This is amazing. Ah, uh, but also, this is one of your favorite olives. <laughs> I love it. I love this so much. I love that, like, I can see where why Caprice wants to do this. I think she's she's probably in a situation at the moment where like she's trying so hard with Millie to make things like a family that like she's seeing this opportunity to introduce Olive to her future family which is really sweet which is really nice and also can I just say like the look of love on her face here is like this is like the sweetest thing in the world this is there is so much endearment in that gaze, like... I love this. And, and Charlie too, like you can see the way she looks at him. Oh, I... I didn't expect this to go this way, but I'm so glad it is. This is amazing. Also, Olive just looks terrified. <laughs> I think I would also be in this situation. Ah. After trying to figure out how to stay out of each other's way, Mike and I eventually make progress on our impromptu assignment. While Caprice and Charlie chat away without a care in the world, my conversations with Mike are infrequent and brief. So, uh, you recognized me as soon as you heard the name. Does Millie talk about me a lot? No such thing as secrets between the Clark and Shifton households. Yeah. If you tell Caprice your favorite color, 
I know about it before the end of the day. Oh. <laughs> he stops his cheese grating to give me a knowing look over. Mm. Orange? Uncanny. I try to play it off sarcastically. Unfortunately, his face lights up. Really? <laughs> That's the first time I've gotten it right the first try. Maybe this old man hasn't lost his touch yet. Oh, I wouldn't have thought that actually, but it makes a lot of sense. They would like all, like orange. Probably all the kind of like earthy natural tones. Lots of plants, all the, the, the colors of greens and autumn, autumn leaves falling on the ground. It feels very olive to me. I love that they're like giggling in the background too. <laughs> and he's so proud of himself. Oh. <laughs> I love this. Well, I'll be taking that joke to the grave then. He goes back to his prep while I start reducing the pasta sauce. Sorry you got wrapped up in this olive. It's fine. If Caprice is happy, then doesn't matter what we actually end up doing. <laughs> Honestly, just I just really love this whole moment just because there's just so much love here. There's so much love. I, I was gonna say like, it's like a double date, but like it's half of each couple doing the activity. So it's not quite. <laughs> oh, but this is, this is so sweet. And they are just so terrified and awkward and I love it. Aww. Aww. Uh, Theo, you have an in-joke that Mike thinks orange is everyone's favorite color, and Haley actually wore things like black and brown before she met Mike, then just fully committed to the bit. <laughs> I love that. Honestly, I would do the same. I'd just be like, so your favorite color, orange? And I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, I can't believe you got it. And then I would also take the joke to the grave. I would... I would just be like, yeah, good job, good job. Look at, look at me, look at me. You can tell my favorite color is orange, right? <laughs> oh, and you return to cooking. Yes, you're at the, we, we are cooking with Millie's dad. Our date night didn't quite go as planned, but oh, just the looks of affection on their faces here like this, this is everything to me. This is like the the cutest thing to me. Like seeing, it's like the way somebody looks at somebody else when they love them is, there's such a, a tenderness to it. There's something so special about it and I love it. Anyway. I forgot who I was talking to for a second. Definitely a mistake I'm eager to not make again. I'm happy to hear that. Enjoying your time together is important. Mm. It'd be nice if all of us could be here. <sighs> Millie used to love our family dinners. She insisted you always made better potatoes than I did. So what happened? <laughs> this, this is going to be like the real like what happened moment, isn't it? Uh, uh. Yeah, well, it's her loss. She'd be over it by now if she just tried to spend time together. Caprice. There's still a few months for her to come around. Let's be patient. What's happening in a few months? Okay. Here it is. It started as an absent-minded inquiry, but I can feel the mood in the room change slightly, even as I'm working away. The silence starts lasting just a little too long to remain comfortable. <laughs> all of the awkward faces just they're each they're all like looking at different people everything is like oh the awkwardness also dr anime hello welcome welcome it's so wholesome honestly this this scene is very wholesome this cooking moment is very wholesome but it's 
Well, how are they going to respond to this? I don't know what they're going to say. It's a little awkward. Because Caprice has not mentioned this yet. To Olive. So this is like... I guess it's kind of Caprice's decision here. How much she wants to say. Caprice? Have you not said anything? Yeah. It's just never come up. Besides, it's not even a big deal. What's not a big deal? Charlie and I are tying the knot this spring. That is an incredibly big deal. Mike continues mixing his now grated cheese with some breadcrumbs, answering nonchalantly. Oh. Oh? Is that all I have to say? Things suddenly make a whole lot more and a whole lot less sense all at once. And there's a hundred things I want to ask, but that single exclamation is all that manages to leave my lips. With the way you talk about your back and forth with Millie's club and all of being in the center of it for a while, I think it's at least good for you to let them know the why, especially now that you're a pair. Yeah, they should know about this. They, they should have been told about this already. <laughs> Like, I can understand Caprice not wanting to, with how awkward everything is, but all, they, they deserve to know at this point. It's not like I was deliberately hiding it. Like I said, unlike Millie, I just don't see the issue. I thought you were just arguing about club stuff this entire time. Yeah, no, if only. <laughs> what? Psh, no, we're adults, Ollie. I love our little club, but it's not something to get angry about. Mm. Look, I know you told us not to interfere and that you can handle it, but just try your best to cool the flames a bit and bridge the gap, yeah? We love both of you and we don't want you two to fight based on our decision. Mm. I feel so bad for everybody. <sighs> Please don't push each other away over this. I'd give the world to see you two back to the way you were. Yeah, I know. I'm just happy for you two, and I'm sure Millie would see it the same way if she just... Ugh, sorry. Hmm. Mike's calm approach to this helps make the conversation feel under control. Even if Charlie looks like she's choking up. There's so much context I feel like I'm missing, but that's not something I'm keen to prod at right now. Hey, Olive. Being singled out in the middle of this causes my heart to drop. I try my best to take a cue from Caprice and bounce back as quickly as I can. Yeah? Well, they're smiling again now, at least. At least they're smiling again. <sighs> I'm sure it isn't a super appealing offer as it stands, but you could join us for Christmas this year if your schedule is open. We'd be glad to have you. Consider it making amends for the sudden change in plans today. Okay. Okay. Caprice's face lights up at the suggestion, but the fact that Charlie's still hung up about this makes me feel awful. This woman's got a lot on her plate. <laughs> she really does. If it's not a burden, I don't mind. Mom's gonna be working this year anyway. Ah. Oh no, poor thing. Oh, working at Christmas. But it's okay, because they can still celebrate Christmas. Just different day. Also, aye aye, hello. Welcome, welcome. Visual novel time. It is. It's Twofold Tuesday. And this game is so incredible. This game is so good. But also, I'm... I'm in pain. I'm in pain. In, in like, the best kind of way. I'm emotionally in pain. And nervous. But also, I love this. I love, I love how they're connecting. I love how everyone's connecting here. It's... Uh, I love this. And I love the way they look. I love this moment. This is such a great moment. I didn't expect this to go like this. I was expecting, like, goofy cooking time, maybe set fire to the microwave. <laughs> this is so much better. But hi, I hope you're doing well. Happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a good start to the week. 
I'm not sure if she's referring to me or mom. That's nothing new, unfortunately. We've already made plans to celebrate a couple days early, at least. Yay. No objections on my end. You being around may even help keep our two troublemakers in check. <laughs> I resent that! <laughs> I've never known you to resent anything. <laughs> True. I'll make sure my schedule's open. The excitement on Caprice's face and the smile on Charlie's puts a nice bow on the conversation, allowing me to refocus on my source, which I now realize I've been mindlessly stirring for the last little while. I think I'm done on my end. Just have to throw the noodles into some water when the chicken gets close to done. Okay. Need any help? Wanna double check my work? <laughs> I'd rather trust the kitchen hand's opinions than my own. It'll be fine, Mike. I don't know how you can be so confident about everything else, but still don't trust yourself to cook a meal after so long. I remember you making this way back when I was in grade school. I hope you have it down by now. <laughs> What, did he not have it down before? <laughs> it's been passable, I guess. But it's hard to feel confident working beside a pro. A pro? <gasps> Hands. Despite the whirlwind surrounding the people in this room, it looks like we managed to make it through to the other side unscathed for now, as smiles and laughter start to repopulate the apartment. There's still a lot of questions left unanswered, but it's probably best to let sleeping dogs lie for now. Everyone involved in this deserves better than all of this drama. Oh, the, the, the truer words have not been spoken. <laughs> it is so true. They deserve so much better than this. Everyone does. It seems like it's a long way off from disappearing, but I can at least help them forget about it for the rest of the day. With delicious food. Wait, I want to see the sauce. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Looking good. Ah. <sighs> Not how I expected that scene to go at all, but I am so glad that's how it went. Alright, hold on. Da -da -da -da. I'm just going to point my fan on me a bit more. Getting a little warm having my computer on, so I'm just pointing the fan towards me a bit more. <laughs> right, though it hasn't been long since the semester ended, I feel like I'm looking at the club room in a light I've never seen before. Wallace, help me carry some of these canvases. Did I hear a uh, please? <laughs> though he argues, Wallace has already moved to help her. Allison is busy pulling a few of her things from the cabinet. See, that's that's such a sibling thing. At, at least, like, in my in my personal view, that's the kind of thing me and Xander would do. Like, if Xander asks me to do something, I will just say no as I'm doing the thing. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> this will probably be the last time we come back here till the break's over. So make sure you don't accidentally leave anything behind. Okay, get everything. Caprice stands hands on hips like a boss overseeing her workers. Still feels like the semester just started. Time flies. Time is fake. It sure went quick, huh? Yeah. It was kind of scary at the start. Felt like everything was going so fast and I had no time at all. Now it feels like... Like, a memory that is barely there. Like, all of the fear and the pressure didn't really matter. But a lot happened, more than I can even begin to count. Like you had so much fun, it was gone before you yeah. noticed? Yeah, time flies when you're having fun. I catch myself smiling, only noticing after the fact. Something like that. Yeah. Fun's a decent word for it, I guess. I met people I consider my friends. I met my girlfriend. I'm thankful for that. And I'm grateful to them. Oh, I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful to them. Things changed a lot this semester. Just a little bit. <sighs> the semester is one thing. But I'm still struggling to believe the club's been around for a whole year. 
What, Alison? Did you think it would fall apart? <laughs> Everyone else here has been in this room longer than I have. They have memories attached I can't even imagine. Gosh, I remember last year. I was too scared to even come in here. Oh, bless her. Yet here you are. The fact that the club began with a stolen key and a hostile takeover seems only fitting for this group in particular. Eileen gives a weary sigh. You know you wanted us to. Eileen puts her hand on her girlfriend's back. Allison smiles. I love them so much. I, I love them so much. She was fine. I could have done without you. And without me, where would you be now? <laughs> Maidenless. <laughs> Here with one less annoyance. Wrong! You'd have to go be a sad loner somewhere else. This room would be ours. <laughs> oh, Caprice. Oh yeah? You think you could have taken it from me? Fight, 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 fight. <laughs> Even with how intense their mutual glares are, it doesn't feel like there's any real animosity here. That doesn't stop Allison from wearing a worried look on her face. Wallace is totally nonplussed. Just another day in the club. Still, I find myself a bit put off at Eileen's negativity. I thought I'd be used to it too by now, but no such luck. Finally coming to the realization that the scuffle isn't genuine, Allison turns to look out the window. But it really won't be long until we're not coming back here at all, huh? Oh. A silence hangs over the room, the energy coming from Eileen and Caprice's back and forth quickly evaporating into nothing. As to be expected at this point, Caprice is the first to speak up. There's still one more semester at least. This one went so fast. Imagine how fast that one will feel. Yeah. Well, it's not like we won't still be around. Yeah, we'll just have to keep meeting up at the pizza place. Maybe. I've been looking at universities. Oh. Oh, universities. Is she thinking about going somewhere... Somewhere further away? Oh, that's a little scary to think about. Same. Oh, guys. Universities away? Well, it's okay, there's phones. There's phones, there's group chat. There's the group chats. Just as I think I've pushed the thought out of my mind, it resurfaces one way or another. Where I'm going after this. It feels too soon to think about the next step. To think about parting ways with these places I've become used to, with these people. I mean, the art club won't die just because we transfer out, you know? Yeah. The deflation in her voice is slight but noticeable. She's back to her chipper self not even a moment later, her posture fixing itself in the blink of an eye. Come on, let's not talk about this right now. We've got things to do! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're on a mission. Allison gives a small sigh as she continues collecting her things. Eileen and Wallace return to gathering canvases. Caprice lingers, looking unsure of what to do. Given her excitement over it just days ago, I'm surprised at how much she's hesitating. I inch my way towards whispering distance. Getting cold feet? No, of course not. Just waiting for the right time. <laughs> oh, oh, you gotta, you gotta say it. It'd be so funny if Olive is the one who's been so nervous about telling everyone. And then Caprice kind of just flounders and they end up stepping in to say it anyway. <laughs> I could see them doing it though. I could see them trying. After her taking the lead so confidently for so long... It's nice to get the occasional reminder that I'm not totally alone with my anxiety. It'll probably be at least a couple weeks before we're all back in one room again. That's true. Now or never. Shh. You two wanna share with the class? 
Well, yes, actually. <laughs> Caprice and I both jump as Eileen pulls our focus onto her. Caught red-handed. Though I guess the two of us sitting in a corner whispering was bound to look suspicious, no matter how careful we were. Sure what? We were just having a conversation. Do you always butt in when... Caprice and I are dating. They did! They, I knew it! I knew it! Oh, yes! Yes, Olive! Yes! I knew it. Now they've done it twice. Twice now they have interrupted Caprice to say what Caprice was about to say. I love this. I love this so much. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Oh, thank you for the confetti, too. The immediate smile on Allison. Oh, I think my chat's frozen on the screen. Hold on. Let me try fix that a second. Why is that not working? What happened? Why did it freeze? Okay. It work now? Okay, it's working now. That was weird. <laughs> huh. I don't know why it just suddenly froze like that. But at least it's working now. But yeah, I I love that the the instant reaction here from everyone is just like Eileen's kinda just like Meh. Wallace is just kinda like Meh. Allison has got the little smile and the little the little hands together, the little thingy touch, the little... I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Technical hiccup. Yeah, it's just very strange when it just froze out of nowhere. But we're back. <laughs> Chat is back. I'm so... I, I really like this dynamic, though. This thought of Caprice about to say something and then Olive interrupts her. <laughs> Taken the moment once again. I don't know how our roles were reversed so handily. I even surprised myself being the one to drop the news like that. With Caprice being so excited about it earlier, I just didn't want the opportunity to pass us by, I suppose. Just, uh, thought you should know, I guess. Yeah, just, just a little fun fact. Uh, move on with your day, thank you. <laughs> The immediate reaction is mild. Even Allison, who was my personal bet to be jumping up and down wildly at the news, instead just settles for a large smile. <laughs> As if to accentuate it, Eileen gives a bored look. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, Eileen's just like, it was obvious. You, you two just fawning over each other like little lovesick puppies. Ugh, we had to look at it every day. <laughs> what? I love how Caprice is genuinely surprised by this. How? How? You were so subtle. You hid everything perfectly. Nobody had any idea. Why? Who? <laughs> <laughs> her eyes narrow, realization hitting her before she even finishes asking the question. She stares daggers at Wallace, who gives a meek shrug. Millie and I still talk, you know. We were in the same club till recently. Ah. Yeah. And Wallace is more <laughs> of a gossip than you'd think. I kind of love that. I love Wallace just being like this unassuming figure in the corner, but he hears everything. And then he goes over to Eileen's place and he's like, hey, you will not believe what I heard today. You will not believe what just happened today at XXX place. Like, like I, I love that. A little gossip. Hmm. Hmm. He's not denying it. Millie. Uh. I tilt my head back over to Caprice, who is now desperately trying to pull her hat down over her eyes. I'll admit, the idea of sinking entirely into my hoodie right now sounds pretty appealing, too. <laughs> oh my god, girl, I have some tea to spill with you. 
I'm trying to, I was having a moment of like, how would Eileen respond to that? She'd probably just be like, just talk normally. <laughs> just, just Wallace bursting through the door like, I have got the hottest tea to spill right now, sister. And she's just like, shut up. <laughs> shut up, I'm painting. Just say it. <laughs> I love her little smug grin here as well, though. Just like... <laughs> they got the jump on us. <laughs> I love that they all knew. I love I love that they knew and just... went along with everything as normal. We didn't want to say anything until you told us so you didn't feel pressured ah. or anything. But now that you have, I just want to say how happy I am for you two. Oh, bless her. Bless her so much. She's so sweet. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, thrilled. <laughs> we can hold our 10th pizza party of the year over it later if you want, but we should probably finish clearing out before they come around to lock the room. Yeah, she doesn't care. <laughs> right! Yeah, time's of the essence. Thank you for the out, Eileen. Um, in multiple ways, I guess. <laughs> hey, need help carrying anything? Yes! You, help with my music player. I need to find one of my sketchbooks, too. Okay. Well, that went well. That went well. I I had a feeling that Olive was going to be the one to say it. Ever since the confession, I'm just like, I I feel like Caprice has all of like the, the intent going in, but she's such a little flustered sweetheart. Like, Olive just steps in, just like, yeah, here, here's the thing. Caprice is barely able to see the stacks of supplies and various in-progress works she's taken with her. I've got a load in my arms myself, but she insisted on carrying the bulk of it. You better find a way to fit all that without damaging my car. When have I ever? I lag behind the group, content to let the others race ahead. Oh. Something catches the corner of my eye. A woman sitting on a bench some ways away, dressed in a white coat with red accents. Millie's all but scowling at her phone. An unusual expression for her. Everything is telling me to just keep walking, but after recent revelations, there's the lightest tug pulling me towards her. Oh no. Oh no, oh, I, mm. oh no. <laughs> it's worth at least trying to talk. Helping Millie is helping Caprice and I've got a million favors to repay her. Hey guys, I forgot something. I'm gonna head back real quick. Okay, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. I have no idea how this is going to go. I'm hopeful. I don't think things are gonna kick up kick off just yet it could be okay but this is going to be extremely interesting also tim hello welcome welcome look at the cute pink cat that loves women that's me that's me right there <laughs> hi happy tuesday happy twofold tuesday they're finally dating and i love it and we had the first kiss and the first, a double date question mark. I don't know how to classify that cooking scene, but I loved it either way. I'll help. Uh, uh, it's, it's good. Your hands are full enough as is. It'll be fast. I love that Eileen is so suspicious here. <laughs> don't take too long or I'll leave without you. Got it. Yeah, I know. And she would. My assurance is good enough for the both of them. They resume their walk to Eileen's car. So Eileen, while I've got you here, I want your updated thoughts on... I'm still fine with handling it for you. Ah, uh, no, I just want to poke your brain a bit. <laughs> I love this trailing out as they're walking further away. Wait until we're back at the car. <laughs> Wrapped up in another conversation, they continue ahead as I circle back. Hey. Hi. 
Millie looks up from her phone, her face shifting from scorn to surprise. Oh, uh, hello, Olive. What are you doing here? Was picking up some last minute stuff. I shrug with the items in my hand. With the rest of your club? Yeah. Yeah, they're heading to the car, but I thought I'd come say hi. She smiles at me, setting her phone on her lap. Well, uh, that's a pleasant surprise. Hello. Hello, Millie Mask. Everything okay? Yes, why wouldn't it be? <laughs> she must notice me glancing at her phone as she looks down at it too. Oh, yes, just talking with my dad. It's nothing. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely nothing. It's really hard for that to not sound suspect, knowing what I know now. Though, speaking of, I heard you might be joining us for Christmas? Yeah. I feel my spine stiffen. <laughs> Word it travels fast. No secrets between the Clark and Shifton households. Yeah, yeah, we heard that. I can't help but grimace. I guess that really wasn't an exaggeration. Millie's smile widens and she clasps her hands together, doing, my, doing her best to drive my uncertainty away. Don't worry, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, get the attention off me so I can slip away and not have to be there. It's, it's... Millie. Millie. <laughs> Oh, I have no idea what this would feel like if I'd done this first. Before doing Millie's route, I have no idea what I would be feeling right now. If I hadn't already done Millie's, I'm... Wow. <laughs> you do? Well, sure. You're with Caprice now, so why not? You don't think it'll be strange or awkward? Millie's just like, oh, don't be silly. It's going to be strange and awkward either way. It's going to be awful. <laughs> no, not at all. Unless you're worried about us. We're nice people, Olive. Oh, the way she says it all is so... It feels so un -Millie. Like the Millie I got to know is so weird. This is so weird. Shoot, that came out entirely wrong. Oh, uh, sorry. I really didn't mean anything like that. I'm sure it's just a tough time for everyone involved. I'm just afraid me being around will make things worse. I know you've been caught between us at uh... times. I'm sorry about the other day. You don't need to worry, though. It's Christmas! Even if things are a bit different from usual, we can't overlook that. Yeah, just just focus on Christmas. Wouldn't want to ruin Christmas. Gotta gotta play nice at Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, Christmas. I want to believe that, but if you're sure. I don't want you to have to push however you're feeling aside on my account, though. Uh. Millie gives me a difficult look, pursing her lips slightly before averting her gaze. Something about that either landed horribly or too close to home. Even with all my time getting to know Caprice, I still can't say I fully understand the relationship between these two. I wasn't around when they were inseparable. Even still, it's easy to see how important they are to each other, even with things as fractured as they are. If there's any chance of things going smoothly, we'll both have to set aside some things. Mm. It's as much up to her as it is me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fact that Caprice was asking Eileen about something before this scene. <laughs> I know, I'm just... Hold on, actually... Actually, let me, let me... Bum, 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 bum. Yes! <laughs> I'm still fine with handling it for you. <laughs> Wait, 
to the back of the car. <laughs> yeah, we know what that is. We we know what that is. Ha. Huh. But yeah. Yeah, this isn't all down to Millie. This is they, they both they both have to stop here. Like, uh, Caprice has to stop approaching so ferociously, Millie has to stop backing away so ferociously. They, they both need to do it. <laughs> I don't know exactly how to take that. The biting sound to how she emphasised it's up to Caprice, too. It sounds familiar. The little I've overheard about Millie trying to avoid Caprice, and Caprice's usual eager self trying to patch things up regardless. Is that what this is about? Are you mad at her? It's more complicated than that. Yeah. The pause that comes afterward is appropriately awkward. If she doesn't want to elaborate on that, then maybe she'll be more open to another angle. I uh, heard about the marriage thing. I don't think she's going to like this angle. And figured it'd make for some yeah. good idle chit chat. Yeah. Well, that's backfired spectacularly. Even if her smile is unwavering, it's hard to miss the annoyance underlying it. Part of me wants to entirely exit the conversation here. I should, really. At the same time, watching the two struggling to navigate around each other has become a lot more painful after becoming emotionally invested. <laughs> Oh, tell me about it. Tell me about it. It's so much more painful when you're emotionally invested. I am way too invested. <laughs> uh... No, but I mean, maybe I don't fully understand what you're going through, but... <sighs> I'm having a sippy. <sighs> you don't need to understand, Olive. It's not your problem to solve. <sighs> She's right. I'm self-aware enough to know I'm overstepping. But at the same time, it's frustrating to not be able to try and do what I can for her. For Caprice. But knowing that, what am I even trying to do here? I appreciate your kindness. Mm. I'm glad Caprice has someone so caring there for her. I'll be fine, though. Says the least fine person. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for trying to butt in. Uh, you were only trying to do good. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do here, okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You should probably catch up with your clubmates. Have a nice rest of your day. It was good talking with you, really. Uh, this is so awkward. Ah. Uh... I feel like that's kind of the worst, too. Like, when you can see problems and misunderstandings around, when you can see something's going on but you can't fix it, like, it's, it's like, out of your power. That is... That kind of situation sucks. It's awful. <laughs> and Olive is just sat here watching this. Like, I feel so bad for them. I feel so bad for everyone. You too. Later. Well, that still went better than I thought it would. I feel foolish, like I shouldn't have even approached her. Did I screw up? I feel like I did. My heart sinks at that disaster of a conversation, and I'm sure there's been far worse between the two. I can't even imagine what it's like for their families. Well, I'm keeping Caprice and the others waiting. Eileen will get scary if I hold things up too long. <laughs> yeah, she will. Okay. Phew. Oh, is it pizza party time? Pizza party. Pizza time, pizza time. The celebratory pizza time. It had to happen. Eileen is so impressed. As Eileen promised, or perhaps threatened, we've chosen to end the day with one last club outing at the usual pizza place. The first outing in which Caprice isn't eager to make herself the centre of attention. 
can't say I blame her. Heck, I can't deny feeling the same way right now. <laughs> Alison's huge smile, by contrast, feels a lot more sincere. I'm so happy for you two. I had a feeling really early on. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, you were really subtle about it, Alice. <laughs> I guess you would be the expert in the room, huh? <laughs> well, honestly, you two weren't super subtle near the end. Yeah, and, and you were really subtle, Alison. I immediately shift my eyes towards the plate in front of me to make my embarrassment less obvious. I'm not sure what Caprice's reaction is, but it's responded to with a giggle from Allison. Either way, I'm glad it all worked out. Me too! Me too! I'm very glad. Yeah, same. Hey, Olive? Yeah? I pull myself back up to eye level now that she's singled me out. I actually wanted to apologize for being so pushy about things. Oh, bless her. That's really sweet. Well, it worked out in the end. I love Allison. She, she's just like the, the sweetest sweetheart to ever be a sweetheart. Like, sweetheart master. Master of sweethearts. I love her. She's so good. And I'm glad. But I could have been way off the mark. And I shouldn't have tried to involve myself like that. No, it's okay. It's exciting. I get it. <laughs> when I was dealing with similar stuff a year ago, I'd ask for help and thoughts. But the only advice I ever got was to figure things out on my own. In the moment, I just thought you two deserved more than that. Aww. I had no idea she was torn up about that. It only really happened once or twice and didn't really faze me. Hey, it's fine. I appreciate the thought, really. It's nice to know you are looking out for us. Aww. You two are being way too serious right now. It's making things weird. Okay, yeah, we need more pizza up in this place. <laughs> so she says, taking a giant bite out of a slice of pizza to put a point on her sentence. <laughs> I called it. Caprice's ability to change the ebb and flow of people's moods never ceases to amaze me. Okay, okay. Let me say one more thing and I'll stop. Promise. Okay. Then it's pizza time. She takes a sip of her soda before continuing. I can't help but feel at least a little relieved when she turns her attention to Caprice rather than resuming our conversation. Caprice, I know you joke about being responsible for bringing Eileen and I together. But for what it's worth, I think there's some truth to that. And, well, I'm glad what went around came around. No, that's really sweet. That's so sweet. Caprice looks like she's about ready to bolt out of the room despite the smile on her face. She remains glued to her seat, however, as Allison leans into her ear, using her hand as a shield to hide her whisper. She's saying. Eileen thinks the same way too. Aww. Wait, what'd you say? What'd you say? Oh, I guess she whispered a little louder if that was what she whispered. I was expecting more whispery than that. I, I think she like hit it and she she said the the eileen line and that was meant to be the whisper but eileen has clearly heard it <laughs> okay that didn't seem to be enough of a safeguard as eileen immediately pulls herself away from the conversation she was having with wallace to make her presence known i can still hear you <laughs> that didn't sound like a denial to me haha uh -huh. got her <laughs> The swift punch to Wallace's arm isn't enough to wipe the smugness from his face. And, in fact, only serves to magnify the smiles of the rest of the club. <laughs> the night continues on, with lots of laughter and most of us wearing various shades of red on our faces. Oh, I love that. 
I love the dynamic of this club so much. I love them. Oh, aquarium? Another date? Oh. Oh my goodness. When Caprice called me yesterday pitching another date, I was all too eager to accept. After making such a big deal of it during our initial outing, I was surprised to be heading to the aquarium so soon, though. Guess I climbed my way up pretty fast. Oop. There you are! Hi! Oh, wait, she, that's so... She's so cute. She's so cute. Oh my goodness, she dressed up. She dressed up for the date. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, she's so cute. I love this. My eyes land on Caprice, waving her arms as she approaches, along with her mom, who looks to still be on the clock. Oh, look at her. She's definitely dressed for the occasion, which is more than what I can say about myself. I find myself torn between admiring her outfit and wishing she had told me the dress code expectations were going to be higher this time around. Oh, she's so cute. I love the little the little headband. That is adorable. Hey. You look great. Mm, ah. <laughs> you too. I didn't do anything different. <laughs> Doesn't change what I said. Hehe. <laughs> Yeah, Caprice doesn't mind. Oh, look at that fancy gay woman. I love her. Oh, shout out to the sprite artist who drew that super detailed frill on her top that's literally never seen again past that panning shot. Yeah, I saw it as as the the pan happened. I was like, oh, that's so cute, but you 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 literally cannot see it anymore. <laughs> oh, it's so cute though. I love this little dress. This is lovely. This is lovely. Our contest of who can embarrass the other more appears to have hit a stalemate. Nice to see you again, Olive. Hi. Hi. You too, Miss Shefton. Ah, uh, I love this. <laughs> Next time for sure, she has a name in her. <sighs> I see where she gets it from. <laughs> I love that face. I love that face. Oh, that's great. It's always going to be Miss Shifton, I'm pretty sure. Until they get married. Until they get married. I guess. Ah, <sighs> that's a good achievement. I like that one. <laughs> Her shoulders slump. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Uh, probably not. She writes herself, sporting a smile and a wink as she does so. Caprice knows this place better than I do. I'm sure she'll give you the grand tour. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. Uh... And Caprice, keep the bullying to a minimum. Says you. Shouldn't you get back to work? Yeah, Miss Shifton. <laughs> Miss Shorten. <laughs> I have a couple minutes left on my break, technically. Mm hmm. So you're really gonna intrude on our date? It's not your date! <laughs> Caprice ushers her off, lightly directing her away from us. Yeah, Mom. I'm going, I'm going. Have fun, you two. Oh, I'm sure they will. Yeah, Cap Rice Pen Shorten. Perfect. Thanks. Tell me all about it. I will, I will. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I love how eager she is to just be like, oh, okay, you can go now. You can go now. I said you can go now. <laughs> ah. 
Oh, wait, I did the ha at the same time she did that. Ha. <laughs> that was a complete accident. Caprice heaves a sigh as her mom disappears from sight, even if her continued laughter could be heard for a little longer after the fact. <sighs> I was afraid she was going to stick with us the whole time. She's just concerned about her kid. Can you imagine them going on dates? Like, their first date was they just wandered to a cafe. Second date, had parents. Third date, with parents. Like, th that would be a little awkward. <laughs> Yeah, love how both Charlie and Caprice have said eyes emoji. It it really is. I I love that expression. I love that expression so much. I wish I wish I had those those eyes, PNG of those eyes to just put it on my model. Wait, I although I don't have that. I wonder if this will still work. I do have this. Oh, it does still work. <laughs> I do have this. They're googly eyes, so they kind of wobble around. <laughs> I forgot I made this toggle. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I genuinely jump scared you. <laughs> How about this one? Hello. Francis seeing you here. Having a very fancy day today. Hi. I don't know why I'm doing this voice. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, where were we? <laughs> no, she's just being nosy. No, she's concerned too. Maybe both. We share a laugh. I'm actually glad the evening started this way. Where do you want to go first? Yeah. This way. The penguin area is all done up for the holidays. Oh, I love penguins. I want to see the penguins. I'm so glad we got to see the penguins. I love penguins. <gasps> Look at their little faces. Look at their little faces. Look at you. Look at them. No, no. <laughs> oh, I love them. Oh, I love them. I love this. I'm so glad. I had a moment of fear when I saw the background fade in. I was like, are we not going to have penguins? Am I not going to be able to see the penguins? I'm going to be genuinely devastated. But it's okay. I am not genuinely devastated. At least not yet. At least not around the penguins. And I love the little lights. I love this. We're at level with the water when the penguins, uh, when the penguins dive in one by one and swim about. Looking up above, we can see the enclosure with its icy floor. Cute! That's really cute. The aquarium staff have decorated it with some fake trees lit with blinking lights. There's even a red and white striped pole with a sign reading North Pole. The penguins pay it no mind. Hey, don't penguins live in the south? Yeah, mostly in Antarctica. Then it's in the wrong pole. It's okay, Santa imported the penguins. It's fine. Don't worry about it, Christmas magic. <laughs> it, it's just for fun. Sometimes taking creative liberties is okay. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the Christmas magic. Christmas magic, the pole swap. <laughs> she gets close to the glass and watches the penguins swim. Aren't they cool? Very cool in many ways. They're cute, yeah? Yeah, look at their little faces. Takes one to know one. <gasps> oh, that was smooth. <gasps> that was even smoother. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I wasn't... I wasn't expecting this. When she says this, she sneaks a kiss. This is so cute. Also, I love that it looks as though this penguin's just going, hey, look what they're doing. <laughs> Take a look. Yes! Oh my God! Take a look at them. They're, they're kissing out there. Look at that. 
Oh, this is so pretty. This is so pretty. And hand holding as well. Not just the kiss. I love the little, like, the, meh, the little ooh face. That's so cute. Exceedingly gay. That's what we're here for. That's what I'm here for. I love this. Look at them. Look at them. Hey, wait a second. I was setting you up for that. Look cool. You only have yourself to blame for changing the world. <laughs> what a setup. Right, of course. Mm -hmm. My mistake. Smooth. I'm consistently amazed at her ability to so easily get the upper hand in every single one of our conversations. Now, speaking of cute ollies, let's go to the otters! Yeah. E you can't just say things like that. She can and she did. <laughs> She's five parallel universes ahead of them. She really is. I, I'm... I'm blown away by how smooth that was. I did not expect that from her. I did not expect her to plan a, plan a chat up line to lead into a kiss. Even though I feel like I should have. Like the one thing she would plan. Like she got dressed up and everything here. They're at the aquarium. Of course she, she'd do something like that. <laughs> I just did. You gotta stop leaving yourself so open. Unless you like it. He. <laughs> Otter, otter time. Otter time, no. Oh. Two babies. Little baby, no, oh. no. Oh. oh, they're so cute. Unlike the penguins who are lively at this time, the otters are all snoozing. I love this naughty and nice list. So Alice has been naughty, Calcifer's been nice, Ollie's been nice, Womble's been naughty, and Dumpling has been nice. I love these names. These are great names. What good names for otters? I wonder if this is Dumpling. <laughs> what did Womble do? That's the real question here. Like, Alice sounds like a kind of name where you could expect some mischievous shenanigans. But Womble? What could Womble do? What did you do, Womble? Did you steal fish? Did you steal a fish from your friend? Alice, did you did you push push another otter into the water? What did they do? I'm glad I'm glad there's only two naughty though. I'm sure they can redeem themselves before Christmas. They can get back on the nice list. Oh well, they're cute like this too. They're so cute. It takes one to know. <laughs> you can't use the same line. Why not? Uh, can two? It's a good line. Let them use it. <laughs> You're not even trying. <laughs> okay, now now Olive has to think of a chat up line. The other enclosure is less decorated, mostly aligned with some white string lights. Setting a subtle yet distinctly holiday mood. I just imagine Olive turning and just being like, uh, so. Uh, did. 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 Did it fall when you fell from heaven? Wait, it's hurt. Oh no. Oh no. And then Caprice would just laugh. <laughs> I wonder which one is Ollie. It's so hard to tell them apart when they're like this. I wonder which one is Ollie. Might not even be one of these. We can only see four here. There's only four here. Maybe Ollie is somewhere else. Found him. Oh. Whoa, really? It's barely visible due to the dim lighting, but I point directly ahead to my reflection. <laughs> Oh, the... Olive. Of course they did. Very funny. Of course they did. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's what I do. She turns to give me a pout, and I take the chance to return the kiss she gave me earlier. <laughs> it's sudden enough that I manage to catch myself off guard just as much as her. That was pretty bad. It was terrible. I loved it. 
Yeah, yeah. Got you, though. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's walk around some more. Yeah. After you. Oh, this is, I love this. I love this. This is such a good date. I'm scared. I hope it's, it stays okay. The walls swim with fish of all shapes and sizes and colors. They flitter about temporary, uh, they flitter about temporary decorations set on the floor of their tanks, making a vision of their own sort of Christmas lights. Oh, that's so pretty to imagine. I was starting to wonder if he forgot that an aquarium has fish in it. Nah. You can see at the back now. I love that she's got this little ponytail. That's what my hair looks like when I try and tie my hair back. I've got just like really tiny little ponytail at the back. But I, I, I really like that with the headband. That's so nice. You're gonna make fun of me here in my element? Yes. I would never. <laughs> She reaches for my hand, and I freely offer it. I love the mammals, but this was my favorite fish tank growing up. It always felt more colorful than the rest. Yeah. I'm sure the bed of pink pebbles had nothing to do with that. Maybe. Probably. But look at the actual fish! This, I, I love fish. She points to various vibrantly colored creatures with her free hand as they pass us by. Dropping random facts on the various species when she has one available, which is more often than not. Her fascination with them doesn't end, and I'm finding it easier and easier to borrow some of her excitement and make it my own. Yeah, the joy of, like, Caprice is so happy about the fish. Olive is so happy about Caprice being happy. <laughs> so long as it's with her... I could definitely see myself visiting again and again. Aww. It's so lovely. Ah, the food here always makes me so nostalgic. Oh boy, time for delicious food. From the Cafe of the Deep. That's as good a reason as any, I guess. While it's better than just grabbing something from a vending machine, it feels somehow more touristy than anything we've done yet so far. She has mac and cheese, and I have some chicken tenders. It would have felt weird ordering the fish sticks. <laughs> yeah, I guess like being in an aquarium, that is, that is a little bit... Yeah. The menu really hasn't changed since I was a kid. And you're not sick of it? It's part of the experience. Yeah. She stops eating for a moment, clearly thinking something over. You're fine with this, right? Of course. I was told to expect the grand tour from you tonight, remember? Wouldn't want to miss out on a crucial part of the experience. I, I'm not- I don't think she's talking about the food. I think she's talking about everything. Thanks, Ollie. Aww. <laughs> the mood seems to mellow, but her smile doesn't. I'm super happy we ah. came here tonight. Thanks for agreeing on such short notice. Oh, this is so nice. There's no way I'd say no. After all, we would have missed the North Pole penguins. Right! No, no. Yeah, yeah. She waves me off and we both share a small laugh before returning to our food. I'm surprised we got to the aquarium so fast, though, given how eager you were to dismiss it at the cafe. I must have done something really impressive. Mmm. Uh, well, you know. I mean, they already met the parents. It's, it's the next logical step, right? Uh, start dating, meet the parents, go to the aquarium. <laughs> she uses bites of macaroni to buy herself some time before answering. The next few days will be pretty busy. I've got oh. some last second gift planning to deal with. You're going to be having dinner with your mom. Then there's the big Christmas thing itself. Yeah, this is the calm before the storm. I see. I see why this is so lovely now. 
Well, I'm still thankful for it. I am still thankful for this moment. And I don't know what's to come. It could be fine. It could be completely different. With Caprice and Olive dating, it could make everything go completely differently. Right? <laughs> Most delusional cat girl. If, if I say it enough times, I can make it true, right? Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Hold on, I feel like I should have the... I, I feel like I should have the thing ready. If I can find where I saved it. You know, the, the thing. Where is the thing? I've lost the thing. Where's the thing? found the thing. Here's the thing. I just want to have it ready. Oh, that's me. <laughs> I just moved myself instead. I want to have this ready. Don't know why. Just got a, a little feeling I might need it. But <laughs> it's probably fine. Yeah, I think it's going to be okay. And, and fine and not a problem. Ha. Huh. Yep. I figured, you know, making the last little bit of time we have together alone special was worth skipping a few steps. Oh, okay. I wonder what the steps are, though. What would Caprice consider the steps? Like, we had first date. We had meet the parents. What would the other steps be? We've, we've had multiple kisses by now. We've had the hand-holding. What else would go between... Hand holding an aquarium. I don't know. Well, either way, we're here now. We don't need those steps. I sort of allowed myself to forget I wouldn't have a lot of free time the rest of this week. But she's absolutely right. I mean, you say this is alone time. But I'm willing to bet your mom has been in earshot of us all evening. Oh, yeah? Yeah, quick, quick, say something over the top. Say something scandalous, quick. Oh, maybe dinner or a movie. I don't know. Well, they, they already had, like, a date out. They already had a date in. Even though that didn't end up becoming Meet the Parents. I think, like... She's talking about skipping a few steps, but I think they have made it through the steps. I think they just, like, levitated up the stairs. They, they didn't need the steps. <laughs> For your sake, I hope not. With that thing at the otter exhibit you tried to pull. Tried to pull? They, they pulled it off. That was a flawless move, Caprice. Like you're one to talk. <laughs> oh, right. You reminded me, actually. Oh? Hmm? It's been on my, on my mind to ask for a few days, but it keeps getting pushed to the background with other goings on. I know you're gonna be busy, so don't feel pressure. But you're free to come visit Mom and I for our makeup Christmas if you want. I figured fair's fair with me joining yours and all. Oh, that's so sweet! Oh. Ah! That's so sweet! Caprice's face was already shining bright, but now she's practically blinding. I don't care how much stuff I have to move around, I'll definitely make sure to drop by. Yes! I'm happy to hear it. Now that everything's settled, we should get back to the tour soon. Oh, I... <laughs> I'm so scared every time I say I love this. I, like, I love this. Everything is lovely. Everything's so great. It's... <laughs> it's gonna stay this way, yeah. Everything's gonna stay nice. Oh, right. I believe. After we finish our dinners, we decide to walk around the aquarium a little bit more. We walk together under the twinkling lights, enjoying the cool evening, taking in the swimming sights again. We stay later than we'd planned before we even realize it. Ah, that was a lovely date. Oh, 
pleasant, pleasant time. The pile of gifts on my coffee table is modest, no more than three, but trying to make them look presentable took all morning. With how busy life has been, the holidays managed to sneak up on me pretty effortlessly. Having to schedule an early Christmas with mom definitely hasn't helped things feel closer than they would otherwise. Uh, definitely hasn't helped things feel closer than they would otherwise. Not that I'd ever complain about that. Yeah, I guess it does kind of take... Oh! It does kind of take time away when the time limit is pushed forward. <laughs> Taking one last glance at the meager stack of presents, I decide my efforts have earned me a cup of coffee as a reward. I pull myself up from the couch, and as if on cue, my doorbell rings. Is this going to be Allison time? I have a feeling this might be Allison time. Yes! Yes! I knew it. Yes. Hi! Ollie and Ali. I can't imagine who would be visiting today, and I find myself just as dumbfounded when I open the door and Allison is there to greet me. Oh, thank goodness. I was losing hope after two wrong doors. <laughs> oh no, she was just knocking on all of them. Oh, bless her. I'm pretty sure you could have sent them a message. She lets out an exasperated sigh. Uh, hi. Sorry for popping in like this. <laughs> I had to ask around to get your address. Yeah? You could have just asked. Oh, Allison. I wanted it to be a surprise. <gasps> oh. Here, Merry Christmas. <gasps> oh. She pushes a small gift bag into my hands, an ocean of festive colored paper sticking out from the top. Oh, no, uh, you didn't have to do anything. If I had known... That's exactly why it had to be a surprise. Go on, open it. Okay, I get it, I'd be the same. I do as she says, going slow out of a mix of caution and a small tinge of guilt. After shoving some paper around, I dig out a ceramic mug colored with various shades of greens and blues. <laughs> Oh, she made this. Oh. Wait, that's the cutest thing. That is so cute. That is so sweet. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love how you can see the little, little wobbles. You know it was made with love. Oh. The handle's a bit misshapen, and there's noticeable bumps here and there, but... It's hard not to smile at it. I mean, I immediately smiled at it, so... <laughs> wow, you made this? Her expression shifts, unsure whether to smile or not. I know it isn't perfect and not really creative or anything, but it's the thought that counts, right? Alison, it is perfect. It is perfect, stop. No, really. It's great. Perfect timing, too, actually. I put the bag under my arm so I can hold the gift in my hands, spinning it slowly as I look it over, piecing together a small plan to absolve myself of the remorse of not having anything for Allison in exchange. <laughs> um, she literally brought it here so that you wouldn't give a gift in exchange. And they are still planning... I love that. <laughs> I was actually just about to put some coffee on. If you have a few minutes to kill, you're welcome to a cup. Oh, I didn't want to bother you or anything. Just wanted to do a quick drop off. It's no bother. If you have to go, that's fine, but you aren't interrupting anything. At the very least, it made me feel less bad about you walking away with nothing. Ah. She tilts her head off to the side as she thinks. A small motion made noticeable only by the way her hair shifts to match. If you're sure, then that's good enough for me. 
I could use a small break from the cold. Yay! Yay! Coffee time! Just be like, here you go. Here is your Christmas gift. I made you a coffee. <laughs> I place her coffee in front of her on the table, filled with sugar and milk, as per her instructions. She's using the mug I had originally meant to use myself, standard and plain. As she takes it in her hands and brings the drink to her lips, I do the same with mine. With a hand holding the base of it, admittedly, not being entirely confident in the handle's durability yet. With the coffee doing its job of warming us up, Alison opens her mouth to speak. So, how have things been? With Caprice, I mean. Pretty good. Pretty good. I can't see things going badly in the future. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Busy feels like an understatement. Ah. <sighs> Allison responds with a small giggle, followed by another sip of her coffee. Sounds like her. Yep, all the time. All the time, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I take another small drink myself, trying to figure out how to continue the conversation, feeling like my response wasn't adequate. I'll actually be spending Christmas over at her family's. There hasn't been much time at all to rest lately. I love the little oh? Oh? A very rare grimace from Allison. She tries her best to hide it away once she catches me staring, but the damage has been done. Yeah, I love that I caught that expression immediately. <laughs> Allison is very, very sweet, but she, she's not very good at hiding her emotions. Whenever she's thinking something, it always just shows on her face. And honestly, I love that. I love that trait. It is so nice to know what someone's thinking. It's, it's very refreshing and sweet. And she's lovely. But yes, she tries her best to hide it away once she catches me staring, but the damage has been done. <laughs> Sorry. Should I ask? It's just that, well... I only really have my own relationship to go on. You know how I told you that the zoo in the winter reminded yeah. me a lot of happy memories? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I spent last year at Eileen's family home, too. And that was... the complete opposite of that, more or less. Yeah, okay, but... Charlie is nothing like Eileen's mom. For a start. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot as well that that was last year. That was last year in this. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I bet Eileen's family didn't have anything as bad as the Caprice Millie Cold War going on either. Uh. No, Olive. It, it's okay. It's okay. Every every family has its as has its moments. <laughs> it's okay. She must notice my face begin to droop because Allison is quick to pull herself to attention, back entirely upright and eyes as wide as they can possibly get. Oh, but there were good times there too. And like I said, it's my only frame of reference, and whenever I see Caprice's mom at the aquarium, she's super nice and... Yeah. It's fine. I get it. If it helps, I was already sort of planning for the worst, with Millie there and things being the way they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the, probably the best way to approach it, just like, expect something bad to happen, so you can be ready for it, but then it's really nice if it doesn't happen. Yeah? Yeah, well, Eileen's family had Eve, so there's that at least. That's very true. That's very true, sweetheart. Also, I feel like Eileen's dad was fine as well. I feel like he was, like, maybe a little bit passive, but he seemed fine. He seemed like a nice enough bloke. <laughs> but yeah, Mike and Charlie are just lovely, though, so it's... It's 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 all just the Caprice Millie stuff. It's I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine fine at Christmas. 
A quick breath to calm herself, followed by another few sips at her cup. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just rooting for you two and got a bit paranoid. Yeah. In a lot of ways, it feels like I'm watching last year fold out all over again, just from an outside perspective. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, Millie and Caprice's family has Mo. That's true, Mr. Mo. Mr. Mo, the true thing to look forward to at Christmas. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even think about how Allison might see it this way. That's so interesting. You know, like, all three friendship routes in this one? I can imagine them being so interesting in different ways. Because, like, Allison's is clearly, like... She's recognizing a lot of, like, the relationship between her and Eileen. And, like, the family at Christmas, all of that kind of stuff. She's rooting for them. She's seeing it from, like, that angle. I'm sure when we get to know Eileen, we'll get to know things from, like, the the painting gift angle. And then, of course, with Wallace. Like, Wallace is friends with Millie, so that's another completely different angle as well. It's really, really interesting. It's so interesting. I'm so excited for all three of them. <laughs> it's so cool. Also, Emily Asher, hello! Yes, Mr. Mo, Mr. Mo Appreciation Squad. He is large and in charge. I, I love that cat. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. That's a good sign, at least. With you and Eileen still going strong and all. Yeah. I love Allison so much. She's such a sweetheart. Uh, oh. She gives a small smile, doing enough heavy lifting when words where words aren't necessary. The smile is quick to turn to shock as something goes off in her mind and she digs her phone out of her coat. Oh shoot. Speaking of which, I have to get going. Thanks for the coffee, Olive. I hope you and Caprice have a great Christmas together. Aha. Uh -huh. She empties the rest of her cup in a couple gulps and immediately sticks her tongue out in disgust. No amount of sugar is going to mask the bitterness when you down it that fast. No problem. Thanks again for the mug. I really appreciate it. Tell Eileen I said hi. I've got to say, like, I love how much coffee drinking there is in this club from coffee dislikers. <laughs> it's kind of great. <coughs> oh. oh, thank you for the follow, too. Thank you for following. Thank you for deciding to stick around. I hope you enjoy your time here. Hope you enjoy the uh, the roller coaster of emotions that is undoubtedly going to happen soon. <laughs> I'm definitely not terrified of in any way. I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. Yes, but uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you for thank you for being here. Hope you have fun. Still fighting against the bitter consequences of her haste, she gives me the best smile she's capable of giving as she makes her exit. So I stand alone in my tiny living room, slowly enjoying the rest of my coffee in my new favorite cup. That's so cute. It's so cute. I love that. I love that it's the blue and green. Like, the blue and green, I immediately saw it and I was just like... Subtle Alice and strikes again. <laughs> oh, it's Christmas! It's it's a pre-Christmas. It's early Christmas. Oh, I'm excited. Mom reaches uh, reaches over to light some candles. They add to the ambience of the cheap string lights she gifted me when I first moved out. Now a yearly staple. Besides that, there's no tree or decorations to speak of, but the snowfall outside and the quiet of the room suits us just fine. The room is filled with the smell of oven roast as I finish mashing the, 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 the potatoes. <laughs> Today isn't Christmas, but it's the closest thing we have together. Oh, look at the snow. Happy Chrysler, Merry Chrysler. Happy Crimbo. I join her in the living room. She's sitting on my old sofa, staring distantly out the window. Her place looks lovely. Oh. Honestly, it really does. 
It's very sweet. It's like, it's very minimal. But it doesn't need more. It still feels very olive with what they've done with it. I love it. It isn't much. It isn't much. But, that, but it's enough. Yeah, I love the warm lighting. Me too. It really feels like a, a cozy spot. It feels like you can just enjoy a comfy Christmas here. It's nice. It's what I like about my own bedroom at home as well. I, I have fairy lights surrounding one of my walls in my room. And like, depending on how I'm feeling, like if I want to have just like a warm glow, I can just change the color of the fairy lights and like dim all my other lights. And it's always so nice. It's like, I I feel like fairy lights should be like a year round staple. Like I, I don't just put lights up at Christmas and then take them down afterwards. I have them all year round. They look nice. They're pretty. There's no reason to limit them to one time a year. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I am a fairy light um, advocate, <laughs> and uh, I'm also a sucker for color change LEDs because I actually have a light fixture above my desk, which has got like an LED light changing light bulb in it, and I don't actually change that very often, to be honest. I do change the intensity of it. I'll make it dimmer and brighter, depending on my mood. But I can, in theory, if I want to, just change the color of that. Honestly, I should do that more often. I'm glad I reminded myself of that. Thank you, me. <laughs> well, I guess thank you too, Emily. You kind of indirectly reminded me with the, the warm lighting comment. But it really is just so warm and comfy. I love it. Aw, oh, two lamps with amber bulbs in them for that. Oh, that, that does sound really warm. That's nice. It's kind of interesting, because I feel like most of the time, I tend to go more towards blue lights. I tend to prefer blue lights, or just like bright white lights. Because I'm like, if I'm putting a light on, I want I want it to be bright, I want to see everything. Like the, the warmer lights, it has to be like a mood for me. Like when I'm feeling in the mood for that kind of comfy warm glow but yeah most of the time all of my lights are very very like neutral white erring on the blue side <laughs> we don't need much you've got plenty here yeah you don't need much you've got enough shouldn't ask for more yeah i remember at the old place we'd put up little signs to make sure santa found his way even without a chimney Ah. Very cute. Christmas was never huge with us after we moved. I was always pretty content with the gift Santa brought, even if it was Mom who nigh forced me to make a list every year. It was so cute how worried you were that he would forget to bring me a present. Oh. Oh, I can just imagine her buying a present for herself from Santa. So as not to upset young Olive. That's genuinely so sweet. Oh, one thing I always remember from when I was younger, um, the house we used to live in, uh, my bedroom, we had an extension built on the house and outside of the window in my bedroom, there was like a flat roof where the extension was. And every year at Christmas, I would leave out carrots for the reindeer. And every Christmas day, I would look out onto the flat loop, onto the flat, 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 words i would look out onto the flat roof and there would be like little bits of like bitten carrots on the roof <laughs> and i'd be so excited i'd be like look they ate the carrots the reindeer the reindeer were on the roof and it's so funny now imagining like my parents just biting into a raw carrot just to throw it onto the roof <laughs> to trick me <laughs> it's really sweet but it was something i i always remembered like just the the little the little added detail of just like yeah I want to leave carrots for the reindeer because they'll probably get hungry and then just like the little bits of proof like yeah the, the reindeer definitely ate those. <laughs> it's very cute. But he always did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, after the time he did slip up and you gave me <laughs> half of yours, I made sure he never forgot again. Oh. That's so cute. 
That's so cute. Imagining Olive being so upset that Santa didn't buy anything for their mom. That they just gave half their presents over. Like, <laughs> bless. That's adorable. <laughs> That's precious. Honestly, it's, it's such a, a fond memory to me. It's such a, a warm memory. Like, uh, I figured out the truth with Father Christmas quite early on, I think. Like, not from, like, a... Not from, like, a super young age, but I figured out, like, I think I would have been, like, eight or so, maybe. And uh, the only reason I found out was because I woke up in the middle of the, ni of the night and I saw my dad bringing the sack of presents up the stairs. And he then thought, instead of covering it by saying, oh, Santa left this downstairs, I'm bringing it up for you. He then went into the extension picked up a speaker cab because he used to do a lot of stuff in bands and then started bringing the speaker cab upstairs pretending that he'd been carrying that the whole time and then he said oh hey sweetheart you're awake <laughs> go back to bed <laughs> as though he thought I wouldn't notice I think it was mostly hopeful thinking that I'd be like half asleep enough that I wouldn't notice and I wouldn't realize but no I was I was awake enough to see him do that <laughs> Like he tried. It was it was a valiant attempt, but also absolutely hilarious. Because if he'd literally just said, uh, "Oh, Santa left the presents down here. I'm bringing them up so they're ready for the morning," I would have immediately just been like, "Oh, okay, thank you. That's nice." <laughs> but no, he, he went the whole like giant Marshall speaker cab up the stairs. Like for a start, why would he be bringing a speaker up the stairs in the first place? <laughs> Yeah, quick thinking on his part. It was incredibly quick thinking. And I don't know how his brain ended up. <laughs> but oh, it was, it was, that, that's, that's also a funny memory for me as well, though. Because I, I, I like pretended. I still pretended that I hadn't figured it out because I wanted to keep getting presents from Santa. And I was scared that if I said Santa wasn't real, they'd stop buying me presents. But uh, I that was like when I knew. But yeah, it was very funny though. Ah, oh, you figured out the truth because you lost a tooth and didn't tell anyone to check. Oh. Oh, just be like, oh, the tooth fairy didn't come. I, maybe they were on strike. <laughs> uh, going up the stairs helps the speaker really hit the really high notes. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. I love that. That's a terrible pun. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, I always remember the Tooth Fairy as well, because my dad really went all out on that as well. Like, every time I would lose a tooth, I'd leave the tooth under my pillow, and I'd always get a note back from the Tooth Fairy on a really teeny tiny piece of paper with really tiny writing and tiny little curls on the writing. Little swirly letters. I would always get a letter from the Tooth Fairy. And I remember I had three specific Tooth Fairies. And one of them was Daisy. One of them was Buttercup. And then occasionally I would get... Oh my... <laughs> Loxley, hello! Oh my goodness, welcome Raiders, hi! You joined at a great time. Uh, this is um, a Christmas a Christmas scene in the game. I'm talking Wait. about the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> Hi, welcome! Welcome on in! Satirical raid! <laughs> a great anecdote to raid into. Yeah, I feel like I have to go from the beginning now. But welcome! I hope the Steam World heist went well. I hope you had fun. <laughs> welcome in, raiders! And Kale as well, thank you so much for the 17-month resub. Oh my goodness. Woo! Thank you! <laughs> but welcome! Oh, Steam World Heist is mean. Oh, I hope it stops being mean soon. It's not very cool of it. But I hope you still had fun, though. I hope you had a good stream. But uh, welcome in, Raiders, to anyone who's new here. Hello, I'm Liri. I'm a pink-haired cat girl from the UK, and I love comfy games and puzzle games. And I'm currently playing an incredible visual novel called Twofold. Uh, I've already completed it once with one route. I'm doing the second route right now. I am midway through act two out of three acts and it's Christmas. So I am like the, the furthest away from the right time of year to be playing this. <laughs> but it's so good, I don't even care. 
But yeah, it started with like talking about Santa and when I realized Santa wasn't real. And that turned into the tooth fairy. But uh, I always used to get little notes from my tooth fairies. And my, I, I know now that my dad wrote them all. He, he wrote on these tiny little pieces of paper, tiny little messages with swirly, swirly writing. And I had three specific tooth fairies who would always visit me. There was Daisy, there was Buttercup, and there was, there was one, there was one tooth fairy I would occasionally get to called Dandelion. And every time she wrote me a note, she was really annoyed at how heavy the tooth was. Like Dandelion would be the one who came when I lost a big tooth, when I lost a, a larger tooth. And every single time, Dandelion would write me a little note like, I can't believe I always get the molars. Well, I guess I, I should give you a gift, probably. Thanks for the workload. <laughs> and I loved it. I, it was like the funniest thing to me. I'd be giggling every time I got a note from Dandelion. <laughs> but yeah, it was really sweet. Like it started with just like replacing the tooth with a coin, a little coin and a note. And then after a while, um, I ended up getting Instead of a coin, as a gift, I started getting, there used to be these little, I guess it's like the origin of Gacha. There was the, these tiny little toys that were called Kitty in My Pocket. <laughs> Wait, I wonder if I can get a picture of them. I used to, there used to be these like little blind packets of uh, Kitty in My Pocket. They're just tiny plastic figures of cats. And... After a while, like, I, I started collecting those and I was really excited. It was like, you could pay a pound and you'd get, like, a blind packet and you don't know what's in it. And so after a while, when I lost a tooth, uh, the tooth fairy started giving me the little kitty in my pocket pouches instead of a coin. <laughs> Like, I think it was Daisy that started with, and Daisy was just like, I heard you've really enjoyed these recently, and we have a few spare in Fairy Kingdom, so I thought I'd give you one. <laughs> and that's, like, so very sweet for me to remember. Good times. Ah, uh, your parents made a small snow leopard print pillow with a pocket for the Tooth Fairy. <gasps> that's so cute. Yeah, that's very smart, too, like, just, just so they know that they can find the tooth. That it won't get lost if you like roll over in bed and it falls from under your pillow. <laughs> but that's really cute. But yeah, I had I had a sun tooth fairy. Although I I don't think I would. I, no no she was yeah. It was really funny. It was always just the like I can't believe you're giving me extra work. I guess I'm giving you a gift. You lose too many teeth. Keep them in your mouth. <laughs> but it, th those were always a lot of fun. It it made the tooth fairy like the myth a little more exciting I think like there were actual personalities to these fairies <laughs> it was a lot of fun and like the the only reason I really remember it is because of dandelion I think if they'd just been general fairy notes I wouldn't remember them as vividly in my head but because I can never forget dandelion <laughs> I'll never forget it it's really fun uh you're into the end game and the difficulty spiked suddenly oh my goodness I hope I hope you can get through it. I hope you can fight the spike to get through the end game. But uh, thank you for the, the raid though, either way. And I know it's it's already past 11 now. So if you have to head off and get some rest or food or drink, please don't feel like you have to stick around, but I'm, I'm glad you could raid me as I was talking about the tooth fairy. <laughs> oh, that was, a, that was a, a nice time for a raid, honestly. But thank you very much. It's fine. Oh, level off stream. That's a good plan. It's a good plan. Just like grind and prepare. And power up. But yes, thank you for the raid. Right, let's return to back to Christmas where we were. Also, yeah, I've got to say I'm surprised too that I I haven't seen a Santa VTuber. Like I'd be really surprised if there wasn't one, but I've I've not seen one. That is interesting to think about. Anyway, the, the reason this all happened was because in the game they're talking about like when Santa would visit before. <laughs> and Olive would get so worried that their mom didn't have any gifts that they would share their own gifts as a small child with their mom, which is like the cutest little anecdote. 
and then her mom is and then that their, their, their mom is just being like well yeah after after that happened i made sure that santa bought me a present <laughs> That's so cute. I love it. I love this this dynamic. I love sharing stories like that as well. It's always interesting knowing how different people like go about things differently. Cause there's a lot of stuff where it's like there there is the the story of Santa, the story of the Tooth Fairy, the story of the Easter Bunny. No wait, the Easter Bunny's real, I can't include that one. Uh, <laughs> but it's like even though the base mythology is the same there are so many different like ways of going about it which i always find really interesting just like oh your family did this well when i was younger it was always like this it, i love i love hearing about that Ah, <laughs> oh, the law just writes itself santa only works one day a year take december off <laughs> yeah oh th that would be so good i want i want a santa vtuber now Give us, give us a VTuber naughty and nice list and give us gifts. <laughs> I would be on the nice list because I never commit arson. Anyway, back to the game. My little Ollie was always <laughs> the sweetest little kid. <sighs> Too nice for their own good. Nah. They're still like that. They're still like that. It's okay. Just, I, oh, I love this game. Her little Ollie. I've been hearing that name a lot more as of late, huh? Don't say it like it's a bad thing. You were the one who taught me, after all. Yeah. Learned from the best. Sweetheart raises sweetheart. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, wanna buy square glasses like that? Oh, like, like olives? Yeah, I, I really like these kind of like half rim glasses. I used to have glasses that, like, before I got the pair that I'm currently wearing, <laughs> these are my actual glasses, uh, before I got these glasses, I used to have glasses that were like, like a combination of these two. It's like August's glasses, but they're more rectangular. Like Olive's glasses, if they were upside down, like if the frame was at the top, they were like that. I had rectangular glasses. And honestly, I, I really love rectangular glasses but I feel like they look better on other people than they do on me <laughs> I didn't realize until I got different shaped glasses but when I got these ones I was like oh no these ones suit me way better I shouldn't have stuck with the the squares for so long but I just kind of never thought about getting different frames because I I liked them until I got these and now honestly now that I've got these frames I'm just gonna stick with these I'm <laughs> I like these ones. I won't take all the blame. When you were growing up, do you know how worried I was that you never had a rebellious phase? Ha! <laughs> then high school happened. Skipping class and hiding out in the bell house once in a blue moon hardly counts. Every kid causes trouble, but you were a uh, good kid. You still are. It's true. It's true they are. Thanks. You're a good mom, too. It's true, she is. <laughs> it's a good family. She smiles in her sweet way and beckons me to join her on the couch. So, how are things going with Caprice? Well... She reaches into a bowl nearby and unwraps a small candy that she pops in her mouth. The date at the aquarium was really nice. Uh -huh. I love this expression. This this olive expression. Mm, I'm so happy to hear that. I had to resist texting you all evening. That would be so funny though. Just like middle of a date. Text from mom. You're having fun. You're having fun, sweetie. How's it going? <laughs> you didn't have to. Oh. I would have kept asking every second how it was going. It's better I didn't. Aww. I can't help but chuckle to myself, thinking back to how that date started. Yeah, we already had one mom there. <laughs> Another one would have, wouldn't have made that much of a difference. What is it? Caprice's mom was the same <laughs> way. 
Caprice basically had to pry her off of us at the start. Oh, that's right. She works there. Yeah. Yep. Caprice gets discounts because of it. You should bring them to the diner sometime. Maybe. Yes, they should. They they definitely should. There are better places to eat, and the last place I want to spend what precious little free time I have is at work. Weird how things change between high school and college. Aw, are you embarrassed your mom might serve you? <laughs> no, no, it's not that. Still, if I tell mom as much, I feel like it'd put her down. She loves the place. Not that I don't, but... Well, I'd like to see Caprice again soon. Her mother, too. Yeah. Oh, right. About that. I'm sorry. I guess I should have asked you first, but... But? I pull out my phone and give it a quick glance. Caprice said she was on her way a bit ago, but I've been anxiously checking for updates every few minutes regardless. You didn't! Really? <laughs> I'm relieved to see she doesn't mind. To the contrary, she's excited. I... might have. Maybe. How do you forget to mention that you've invited someone to your Christmas celebrations? Well, I don't know. They, they've had a lot on their plate. I, gu I guess they can get a free pass. <laughs> ah! As if on cue, I hear the buzz of my apartment's doorbell. I should have expected she'd skip the text and just come right up instead. Uh, that's probably her. Uh -huh. I'll get it. Mom giggles sweetly as she heads back into the kitchen to start on the next bit of dinner prep. <laughs> you sure sound enthusiastic today. Because they are. As if she isn't, I spare her the rebuttal as I quickly rush to open the door. Ollie! Merry Christmas! I brought pie! Pie! Yes! A box is shoved in my face. Oh, you didn't have to. Uh, sure I did. It's chocolate. <gasps> Choco pie. She steps past me and begins looking around my apartment. She quickly notices my mom and rushes over to her. Ah, oh, hi, Miss Penn. It's been a while. Merry Christmas. Oh. oh, so she can use polite greetings? It sure has. Merry almost Christmas to you too, Caprice. I can't believe Olive has <laughs> been keeping us apart. Is it me, Ollie? Oh no, don't, don't do this. They're never going to survive if the two of them team up. <laughs> Caprice gazes towards me with a faux heartbroken stare. I give her a raised eyebrow, but Mom pipes in immediately, looking a bit worried. Oh, darling, I've just been working like a dog. Ollie's been just head over heels for you. Oh, these two. Oh, whoa! <laughs> joking? I was just joking. So was she. <laughs> Bright pink flushes her face immediately. I laugh a little to myself. Even without playing along with her bit, it looks like Mom is able to keep up with Caprice in her own way. I know, dear. <laughs> I'm teasing you. You just relax and the two of us will finish cooking up dinner here. The teaser becomes the teasy. Or the teased. Teased is already a word. I... <laughs> uh... And sit here bored? No way! Let me help out with something! No, no. No, she doesn't have to help. She does not have to help in the kitchen. Uh... <laughs> you still owe me a lesson, don't you? Oh. I don't work holidays. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, what a be great fun. response. We could use the help. Mm. August doesn't know. 
She doesn't know. <laughs> At least someone here trusts me. Hey. They're just looking out for your best interests, Capri. Here, you try. That's it? Come on, this is easy stuff. Well, you gotta be able to do the easy stuff. So she says, as she starts filling our dinner with holes, consistently missing her mark with the meat thermometer. It's starting to look more like Swiss cheese at this point. <laughs> you can't just stick the thermometer in anywhere. Look, you have to measure a specific spot. I point to the center of the roast for her to measure, only for her to jab the needle in with such speed and power that it forces me to pull my hand back instinctively in terror. She simply laughs the brutal stabbing off with a small giggle. It's good to see you two having fun together. Having fun? I think there's like attempted murder going on here. <laughs> Mom smiles as she carries a tray toward the table. Ah, look! Is it ready? She blocks my field of view with the meat thermometer without warning. Yes, that looks fine. Hee <laughs> hee. Time to eat! Yeah. Gotta say, never used a, a meat thermometer before. Oh, uh, I've always gone for the approach of um, cut into it and see if it looks done. <laughs> but a meat thermometer is probably a really good way of going about things. All right, dinner time. Dinner comes and goes, the relative quiet of the apartment replaced with energy and excitement as Caprice and Mom catch up as if they hadn't seen each other for 15 years. We eventually make our way back to the living room for a small gift exchange, nibbling on bits of pie in between. Caprice, help me with your gift. It isn't much, but I hope you like it. Oh, gift time! I'm so excited, yes! Caprice practically bounces up and down in excitement as Mom carefully unwraps her gift. Anything from you is bound to be wonderful. Doubly so if Caprice was involved. Ah, we get it, we get it. She's the favorite. Oh my goodness, Suzume! Hello, welcome! Welcome on in, welcome Raiders! How's it going? Welcome to Quimmers! <laughs> Gay Wolf Raid! Hi, welcome to, to Gay Game Raid. Get Raid stream. Gay Gay Game Stream. <laughs> you had to end early for your need to see this again with full focus. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for sending the raid this way. I oh I love the thought of you just being like, hold on, I gotta end the stream. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Liri's about to do the twofold gift exchange. We gotta go. <laughs> But thank you so much! Welcome in, Raiders! To anyone who's new here, hello! I'm Liri, I'm a pink-haired cat girl from the UK, and I love comfy games and puzzle games and, um, women. And twofold. I do love twofold. <laughs> she literally did that! I'm so glad. I feel so honoured. Thank you! <laughs> but I hope you had fun with the Persona 5 Strikers, though! Thank you! Thank you for the raid! You're here just in time for the gift exchange! Woohoo! Here we go. I'm so ready. I'm s I can't wait to see what this is. I want to know what the gift is. I'm so excited. But yes, welcome on in. Come on, pull up a chair. It's comfy time. <gasps> oh. She pulls from my carefully wrapped package a simple watering can littered with paint, leaving almost none of the metal beneath visible. Your flower pot gave me the idea. When I told Caprice about it, she wanted to help. So we split it up and painted different parts of it. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, you too. Oh, it's, it's so bright and nice. That's so lovely. Oh. Mom softens visibly, the way she does whenever she tries not to cry. I know spring is a ways off, but I hope it'll come in handy. Yes. Well? Well? Of 
course I love it. Thank you, both of you. Oh, that's really sweet. She pulls the two of us into a warm embrace. I feel Caprice hug back tightly too, and Mom plants a kiss on top of my head. After we settle back down, Caprice leans a bit against me, content to watch. Now, mine isn't as extravagant. Doesn't have to be extravagant, if it's meaningful. Reaching behind herself, she pulls out an envelope. What? You know, you didn't have to do anything. Oh. I open it up to find a cute little Christmas card. And cash. Not a small amount, either. This is... <sighs> Four semesters worth. tearing up <laughs> I'm actually tearing up right now <laughs> oh. Oh. oh my goodness goodness when you it's so that's so sweet that's really really sweet that's gonna be such a a moment this is oh. this is one of your favorite non-tracing footsteps songs i love this song every every time this song is played it's been, it's been a moment that has made me cry. <laughs> oh. That's so, that's so. That gift means so much. That is such a powerful gift. But I also know that Olive is going to feel so conflicted about accepting it. Because like when you think about why Olive is working as well, they've been working this whole time to support their mom, to help their mom out. And now to receive this as a gift is so incredible, but they're gonna struggle so much to accept it, I feel. I, like, I can tell immediately from the expression, they are going to struggle to accept this without feeling guilty. But it's, it's so sweet. Like their mom is so proud of them. She is just so proud of them. You can just tell with like every action, every moment, it's just... <laughs> uh... Wow. I grit my teeth to try and hold myself together once my brain catches up and realizes what's happening. What she's giving me. Everything I've done in my adult life was for the contents of this envelope. Working as much as possible, pursuing a degree I don't feel anything for, all to help support the woman who did everything and more for me. <laughs> and here's the result of my efforts, somehow back in my own hands. <laughs> Yours, Ollie. This is all yours. I think they've earned it. I don't think a single person would say that they didn't earn it. They earned this. They... I... I don't really know what to say. I've been sending money to Mom all this time, 
thinking she would need it more than me, thinking I can get by just fine. <laughs> My mom's coarse, dry hands wrap around mine, gently pushing the envelope that I'd subconsciously been handing back to her towards me. I want you to take care of yourself. I have no other way to convince you that I'm doing okay, but it's time for you to focus on your own future. Use it however you want. Take a year off classes, take a year off work. Find something you really enjoy doing. <sighs> I'm so proud of you. Please stop holding yourself back for my sake. I'm your mom. You're supposed to let me support you, okay? I can't say anything. Glancing over to Caprice at my side, she takes her hands and places them on mine instead. You'd be curled up on the floor. You are curled up on the floor. If I was not sitting at my desk, I would also be curled up on the floor. Lovely. And hey, you have Caprice now. You could even spend money on her. The two of you being happy together is as good a gift as any. Mm. Caprice blushes a bit, but she squeezes my hands all the same, letting me know she's here for me. We'll always have each other, but I need you to start living for yourself too. Okay, Ollie? Mm. It's, they do. They do. It's true. They, they need to live for themselves. It takes me one more minute to process. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can tell how hard that was for them. You know, would it be weird to say I'm really proud of them for accepting it. Like, I'm really proud of the fact that they... Ha they are... saying okay. Like... <laughs> and with that, the dam bursts open as I bring my free hand up to bury my eyes. The stress of passing this last semester, following a business degree just to help her as best I'm able. <laughs> She's said things similar to this before, but as she and Caprice wrap me in a comforting hug, it's the first time I've really been able to understand what she's been saying. <laughs> something this one doesn't fit it's not this isn't the right one i need a different one but don't worry i have the perfect one <laughs> It. Oh, I made myself small again. I keep doing that. <laughs> oh, I love this. Mm, I, I love this. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mom. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I'm... I've... <sighs> you take care of each other, okay? Yes. We will. I promise. Mm. Mm. <sighs> oh, my 
my goodness. Thanks for the ride. Oh my goodness. Actually, you know what I'm going to do now? I know it is a little earlier than the four hour mark. I think I want to save here. Because <laughs> I know what this is. I want to save here because I know what's about to come. And I want to bask in that moment for a bit longer. I don't want to move on yet. I am not ready yet. This is next week. This is next week. That felt like... Yeah, that, that felt like a, the, a good ending point. That's definitely a good ending point. Then that's a good starting point for next week. But yeah, I'm like, as, as soon as it was like a few days later, I'm like, no, I know what this is. I know what this is going to be. Not yet. Not yet. I need, I need a moment. <laughs> I need a moment first. Uh, but that that felt like a, a perfect stopping point either way though that felt like a, a great point to leave it off at for next time I can see now why you wanted to head over for that scene I, I get it I get it I get it oh that was so good oh, I want to give full credit and say Theo wrote that previous scene oh thank you it was that was so good. That was incredible. Honestly, like, honestly, the the whole team involved in this. You are all amazing. You are all so amazing. This is. It's like I I knew before even starting the game like how long this has been in development. How much of a labor of love this has been. So I I already knew how much like heart has gone into it. But it still manages to blow me away, like, every time. I'm- I'm always just... I love this game. I- I am genuinely so excited for when I finish playing it, just so that I can start, like, watching other people play it, and checking, like, Let's Plays and stuff. And, like, consuming fan content. Like, I'm- I want to share this with everyone. I want to share this game with everyone. I'm- uh, it's it's kind of funny. I'm pretty sure I actually already convinced one of my friends to get it before even playing it myself. <laughs> I know he bought it because I was I, I recommended it, and he also really really loved it. And I'm like I'm just very excited to just recommend this to every single person I know who might even like just remotely be interested in part of it. I just want to share it. I just want to share it. It's so good. I, I'm so, I'm so glad I'm playing this. I'm so glad. Mm. Yes, consume all the Elan streams. Yes, there's so many good games. There are so many good games made by Studio Elan and under the uh, the Bellhouse Publishing branch too. Like, Elan knows how to find the the good devs. Gotta say, gotta say, it's a really nice umbrella it's really nice and there hasn't been a single game i've played that i've not enjoyed not a single one which is quite impressive <laughs> but yeah i'm so i love this game but yeah i i think that was a, a perfect spot to leave it at because that means this stream this stream was a healing stream this stream was good times good vibes we went to the aquarium we met the parents, we did some cooking, we had the first date, we had a really meaningful, impactful Christmas. We had good times. And nothing can possibly go wrong. Just gonna stay in my little delusion bubble for another week. Just, just thinking about everything being nice and lovely and nothing to worry about. <laughs> I'm scared for next week. I'm scared for next week. Really looking forward to it, but terrified for next week. And, oh, that was that was so good though. I'm so glad. Huh. 
What a game. What a game. I'm so glad I bought all that twofold merch. <laughs> I bought all of the standees. I bought all four of the standees. I also bought the art book and it has been killing me not looking through it yet because I've done like the, the fastest little flick to try and like make sure I don't see anything I shouldn't. And I'm, I really want to look through it, but I don't want to spoil myself. So I haven't. <laughs> but, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Right. Anyway, with that, I guess I bloop. I will head on over to here and we can find a raid target. Oh, the chat's frozen here too. Hold on, let me refresh it. Let me refresh the chat box. I don't know why chat just randomly decided to freeze halfway through the stream. <laughs> I'll have to look into that, I guess. Oh, I just realized this is still, it's hiding in the background. Let's put it, put that, that's, that's me. That's me right now. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, chat box fixed. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, see you next time! Yes. Now, thank you for being here as always as well. I'm always so happy to see you here. I hope you've, I hope you've been enjoying <laughs> watching me play it. I really love this game. I'm so glad too. I'm so glad we reached the August scene. I feel like that was such a perfect ending point for the stream. That was just really good timing. That worked out so well. But yes, thank you so much, everyone for joining me for two, two, Twofold Tuesday. I'm always happy that I can do it. Like, I think next week we'll probably be returning to the usual time, purely because, like, this time slot is quite nice. I, I don't usually stream at this kind of time, but I, I always feel myself getting kind of tired when it's, like, midweek evenings. And... I can definitely feel myself getting exhausted right now. So I, I will be back to afternoons next week. <laughs> I haven't got any random appointments I forgot about next week. <laughs> but uh, thank you everyone for being here. Yeah, yeah it is. It's, it's a quarter to midnight right now. It's very close to midnight. So I should probably get some rest. Uh, hey, Suzume, did you want to keep, did you want to keep streaming? Are, are you done for now, or did you want to, like, go back to streaming after the, the moment? Asking for no particular reason. <laughs> okay, you're done. <laughs> I just wanted to offer just in case. <laughs> but thank you for the raid. Right, let's see who's around to send a raid on to then. Let's have a little cheeky look. There's quite a few quite a few people around. Hold on. My page just closed on me for no reason. That was quite rude. Right, let's see. Who do I want to raid? I haven't raided Momoka in a while. I haven't raided Momo in a while. Let's go raid Momo. Let's go raid Momo. I love Momo. She is lovely. Playing a... Poyo? Retro gaming. It's retro gaming time. But uh, I haven't had the chance to raid Momo in so long because our stream times don't really overlap. So I want to send the raid over Momo's way. If anyone doesn't know Momo, she's another member of Burpro with me. She is a pink magical cow. And she is the biggest sweetheart. She's so lovely. She's so lovely. She's great. We are both pink magical girls. Wait, I can't say that like this. Hold on. We're both pink magical girls. <laughs> A slight magical moment before I send the raid along. But yes, I'm going to send the raid over to Momo, who's doing some retro gaming. Oh, wait, it's Kirby. <gasps> it's Kirby. Oh, yes, it's Kirby raid time. Yes. I'm going to send you over Momo's way. Please send all of the love from me. Oh, wait, before I end too, I should probably like post the, the, the Elan merch code as well. Just if anyone likes Twofold or any other game under the the Bell House publishing branch or Studio Elan itself. Uh, if you buy anything from the web store, you can get 10% off using code Lurie. <laughs> and there's some really nice merch in there. So let me just not forget to mention that before I head off. But yes, I'm gonna send the raid over to Momo. I'm glad I get the chance to raid her. Right, let's see. Did I change the raid command? I think I did. 
I did. I did. I did the raid command. I remembered to change it after the, the Talos stream. But there's the raid message. If you're subbed, we got the comfy emote. If not, we have got hearts. And I will send you over Momo's way. She's very sweet and lovely. Please send all of the love from me over in her direction. But yes, that is it from me for now. I will be... I was going to say resting. I cannot lie. I'm not going to be resting. I'm going to be working on some projects tomorrow that I've been cooking up. Like, silly things. Don't expect much. But uh, I've got a few things that are in the works at the moment that I'm hoping I can catch up on tomorrow. So I won't be streaming tomorrow. But I will be back on Friday for some more divinity um, grave recycling with Xander. <laughs> But yes, thank you. Let me get the raid going. There we go. Set that up. I'm heading you over for Kirby times. There is fire. There is lava on the screen right now. I hope she doesn't perish. I hope I don't raid her while she's in the middle of doing something intricate. <laughs> but yeah, this has been really nice, though. I, I always love Two Fall Tuesdays. This, this game is so special. But yes, that is it from me for now. I'm I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> oh, I, I can still feel... My eyes are still feeling like I'm about to burst into tears. <laughs> that was so... Uh, very glad. Very glad of how the stream went today. Ah, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And until next time, bye-bye!